イズキュンクイドゥーセアロドユーイウェリーコウロノライノモトゥーオトゥーノムイサラペアアウクーナナアウィーシーイエドクーナム Greetings, everyone, and welcome to episode 4 of Fumito Ueda Podcast. I am your regular host, Albert, and today I am joined by two co hosts, Logan, my regular co host, and our guest for this show, Naz, the sculptress or sculptor. Introduce yourself, Naz. How's it going, guys? My name's Naz or Nazi Gorin, and I'm a freelance artisan from Queensland, Australia. Fantastic. So we have another Australian in the chat. <laughs> Indeed. Fantastic. We're,、uh, we're like a, a big, like, hugging Australian, like, sandwich hugging the, the US in the middle. What's up? Yeah. Speaking of which, <laughs> that's, nice. that's right. Now, speaking of which, Mr. Logan, please introduce yourself, my friend. Couple weeks、uh, where we weren't really recording because、um, you、That's、know the, the YouTube channel has just been growing so exponentially. Yeah,、um, it's crazy. Pains. Yes,、yeah. that's right. And, and, and the, the network itself. So we've added a few shows and everything. And, but now,、uh, as of today,、um, literally, I've sort of made, made, moved things around with like schedules and such that there won't ever pretty much. Ever be any sort of、um, delays and stuff again. And、uh, this transition into the new recording setup is,、uh, has been, yeah, as you said, a bit of growing pains, but that's to be expected. And、um, we're tracking really well. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to、um, uh, getting started with,、uh, with yeah,、um, sort of the, the, like instead of, you know, those first three, our first three episodes of,、um, those were really, and Nick, Nick Sutner gave us sort of his blessing into continuing our show, you know, and、uh, getting started on this、mm-hmm. sort of journey. Um, which I'll sort of touch on our interview a little bit there with yourself, Naz.、Um, but、uh, yeah, needless to say, I'm happy to kind of properly like this. is, we've, we've, We're out of the Shire and、uh, we're, that, that's it. This is, we've、Not、got. There. Exactly. So we made, we've, we've walked a couple of Ks, but now like the, the, the open road <laughs> lies before us. So, the、um, Naz Google. Oh! The Naz is pursuing us. What is up? I dig、oh, it.、Yeah. I didn't even think of that. That's funny. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that. But,、um, but yeah, needless to say, also, Naz, because、um, I do respect how everyone wants to be sort of、um, uh, the sort of terminology and such. And like, I encountered this, like, my girlfriend, she wants, like, there's a certain,、uh, you know, way to sort of、uh, the, the title, you know, that, that, that one is given. And I just say she does, like, emotional intelligence work. There's a specific wording. So, needless to say, I want to say that、uh, with how you said、um, artisan, I'll,、um, I'll make sure to edit around. Because I don't want to like, I, I said sculptor, sculptress, but、um, this is all going to be edited out. But、uh, is that so? Would you want, do you want to take that one again? Or are you happy with being called a sculptor? Oh, sculptor's fine. Like, honestly, there's about 50 different labels for <laughs> what I do. So that's fantastic. <laughs> some, you know, some people would call me a plushie maker or a, Yay! Or a sculptor or all sorts of things. So I, I'm not precious about、um, what label we use, sort of thing. So fantastic.、Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I will crack on with the rest of the intro. But before I do, I'll quickly just mention so Naz、um, has not just merely, not merely,、um, Created、uh, these amazing uh, artisan crafts, as I'll call them, of,、uh, of sculptors,、um, which just like completely swept me off、uh, when I just saw、uh, her Instagram channel,、um, your Instagram channel, well, third person referring to each other.、Um, <laughs> but, uh, but no, 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 I was telling in the pre show that, that, that like it's actually a trico, it's not a sculptor, like this thing that you've made, like individually feathered, like needless to say, I'm building this up, listeners, but she's made this incredibly. Beautifully, like a live、uh, trico sculpture, which、um, we're going to dive all the way into that、um, as I sort of close out the intro. So I just figured I'd leave that tease. So, the artist Fumito Ueda, who created Ico, Shadow of the Colossus, and The Last Guardian, 
is currently leading his new studio, Gem Design, in developing a new title, The Girl and the Sleeping Giant, as we've come to call it. Each week, we chronicle the creation of this forthcoming adventure in the form of weekly news, informed and wild speculation, analyses, and more. Interwoven with reporting on and breaking down any and all new developments, we are also revisiting Ueda's first three titles, starting with The Shadow of the Colossus, followed by Eco, and concluding with The Last Guardian. In doing so, we endeavour to compile a fully comprehensive archive of material, long-form, in-depth analyses and discussions on each character, creature and location, personal stories from fellow appreciators of Ueda's work, interviews, theories, interpretations, and much, much more. The time has come for Mr. Ueda's unmatched and inimitable form of ongoing storytelling, world-building, and overall contribution to the artistic validity and power of this medium, the most profoundly moving and life-affirming art form ever, to receive a thorough, intimate, and loving chronicle, now and for posterity, from the very community that has so embraced, cherished, celebrated, and resonated with the man, his team, and their work for close to two decades. We wish to thank you for the privilege of your time in listening in and joining us on this adventure. With that regular rundown out of the way, let's get the show started. Fantastic. And so the mood has been set. We are in Fumito Ueda mode. Ah, <laughs> we can relax. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. So let's do a quick little roundtable. Um, Naz, welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> do you feel welcome? <laughs> do you, shall I get you anything? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, there you drive go. down and um, or drive up. What well, about you? <laughs> that's right. That's hilarious. We'll, we'll take your coat and everything. Uh, Logan, you do know that the plan eventually is to get the actual studio happening. You know, get get all the the trappings and uh, uh, bells and whistles that that you know. You got your kind of funnies. You got your um, rooster teeth people. Yeah. It's it's totally that's and that's not the like the eye rolly kind of goal. It really is um, what we what yeah, we no, want. Hey, yeah. If, if um, others can do it, then there's no yeah. reason you can. Absolutely, and it'll just be the the rub. The the twist will be it's not it's not outright anti millennium or anti millennial or anti short format, which is where everything is heading. But uh, needless to say, Naz, um, uh, yeah, it's basically that's how interactive artistry got started. Is that it's just it's the the the, the kind of um, a place where you can just literally just feel free to go as in depth, like as much as you want, to the point where we we obviously don't want to do it to a fault, to to like a detrimental, like going six seven hours. But uh, <laughs> the the idea is, yeah, like a lot of uh, every much of what's being put out there in. The, I I don't personally like the word content. You can use it if you like, but much of the content being put out there is very much um, uh, in the sort of, it's like tailored to certain demographics of like, oh, people will turn off the thing if it's 10 minutes long or keep it to an hour. It's like, we really are just like quietly like an old man who, you know, like after, or an old woman, you know, at a certain age when you're backing out of the driveway, you just don't look anymore. I just don't care. <laughs> I just don't, I don't look at like how long we've been. And that's why, again, I, it's never a pressure on either, on any of my co Host, including Logan tonight, who is joining us um, from the US. Uh, 3 a.m. it is there. So um, uh, I've just asked, I'm just going to ask a bunch of random people who are listening now uh, to give you a little mini round of applause, which I'll join you. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, legend. <laughs> appreciate it. Awesome. So uh, long story short, uh, which is um, apt because I'm talking about how long winded we tend to be unapologetically. Uh, welcome to the show and uh, we, and just breathe. Just like talk as long as you like, go into as much as many tangents as many tangents as you like that's kind of the space that we are here at interactive artistry nas that's a um, dangerous offering oh no that's it we have a tangent taker on our hands <laughs> <laughs> get me talking about my favorite games and, and oh my gosh jumps, so. that's amazing well um speaking of which thank you for the segue now speaking of favorite games um what is your uh relationship with Fumito Ueda's works and how did you first encounter them uh, the first game I played, like a lot of people, was Shadow of the Colossus. Mm. Uh, I think I would have been about 12 at the time. I was still quite young. And okay. um, I remember getting the game for Christmas. And uh, my sister and I both used to, uh, when we were young, play games together. And that was sort of our Aww. bonding time. So um, 
I was sort of um, the brawn and she was the brains, if that makes sense. Yeah, you know, I did that with the, that's right. Yeah, I, with my siblings as well. And Logan, you did the same, like playing the games together with the siblings, you know, you team up oh. and help each other. Well, I, you know, I, I do have a fraternal twin brother, but it was, it was a more interesting relationship where I was a much, much bigger gamer than, than he was. But um, whenever there was one thing that I couldn't figure out, he could always figure it out. Even though, oh. you know, in, in many aspects, he wasn't uh, really uh, as nearly as good at, at most things in gaming. Whatever it was, if there was just something I was having trouble with, he would always have a suggestion. And nice. he would always end up being right. So that was very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah please continue, Naz. Um, yeah, so um, we would usually do that sort of thing. We would pick a game and one of us would get to play and the other would sort of be the sort of backseat driver sort of thing. But um, mm. we played that game and, and you know, we, we were quite young and we just thought it was the most amazing thing ever and I still think it's one of the most amazing games ever. Mm -hmm. um, my sister went on to um, play Eco um, and I watched her play that game. And um, then I sort of, I think, I'm not sure how long ago it was, it was quite a long time ago when uh, uh, The Last Guardian was originally teased. Oh, yeah. uh, and ever I since know. I saw that teaser, I've just been just waiting for The Last Guardian to come out with such enthusiasm. So yeah. it's, it's been a long wait. So that was, um, yeah, that was pretty awesome to um, be waiting for it since the first teasers so that's awesome yeah. it sounds like you're cut from the same cloth as logan as i we were doing the very much the same thing weren't we logan yeah yeah i mean luckily i, I didn't have to quite wait from the first teaser but um <laughs> we were waiting a long while yeah, yeah for sure yeah I, I must echo the same um your sentiment there uh naz is that when i saw it it was yeah i don't know it yeah it was a particularly i also a little bit of a I should I should probably um, uh, correct myself because for those listeners who Logan actually did this for me, which I really the errata for episode one, I, I kept saying two thousand seven, two thousand seven. It was actually mm -hmm. the first tree <laughs> teaser. I believe it was two thousand and nine, mm -hmm. or, or yeah, or like late two thousand and eight or something. Um, and yeah, yeah, I believe it was oh nine. Oh nine, yeah. So so like redact yeah, that. And, yeah, when I like master and like do the uh, HD remaster of all the episodes, I'll like uh, I'll do a I'll chuck a George Lucas and correct the, that that like one <laughs> one word. I won't I won't be that proactive. You you know I won't be Logan. You know me. Um, but needless to say, no, I I, I very much resonate with that Nas. And um, what was it uh, in particular that um, drew you to um, our chosen to uh, our subject for today, which is the very first first colossus is there a particular little tease we're going to dive into obviously symbology name and everything uh, as the main body of this episode but um what what is your kind of hot take on valus the very first uh, colossus it's been so so long since i played this game <laughs> but I, have, I need to play the remake um, yeah. but i just I, I guess i was quite young when i first played it so it was just i was just in awe i was just and it's funny going watching playthroughs now of adults playing the game yeah and they can defeat a colossus in in 15 minutes or however long it takes but i remember it taking days to <laughs> fix as a kid and i would you know i i guess some of them were easier than others but i remember it was sort of back before um I was sort of on the internet as an adult and yeah. I, I didn't know that I could just type in how to defeat blah, 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 Colossus. Mm. And, you know, I would get frustrated with some of them and I might stop playing for weeks because I just couldn't figure it out. Yeah. So, for sure. You know. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And how about yourself, uh, Logan, your quick little, um, just your mini mini vignette of your relationship with Valus and what you reckon of the impression. Yeah. I, I, you know, I think my, my very first experience is kind of, hazy um because that was just the very first time i played the game back in 2005 which which i kind of wasn't like the important playthrough for me was the the ps3 playthrough uh, right which i think i kind of mentioned before here so the first playthrough was just kind of um you know is really just a far off memory um but yeah. i know i really liked valis uh it's probably my favorite colossus for a little while um because i didn't get uh to pelagia until i played on ps3 so he couldn't have been my favorite because i haven't gotten to him yet um so you know valis is kind of cute um yeah and, um, he is a bit adorable isn't he yeah, yeah and of course you know that's just a, a great um you know i mean not only is you know the actual cinematic intro to the game perfect um but you know in general you can probably consider everything up until you 
beat Valis to be sort of the intro segment of the game and and all of that is is you know super well designed i mean you know from the way he he comes in from the right um you know and and moves into that you know moves kind of far away from you and you can see his whole body and and there and you know it's it's a really really amazing uh introduction to to the to what these things are very evocative yeah definitely so yeah there you go listeners that's kind of what we're going to dive into in terms of our main topic there for this um for this episode so but what i'll do is uh, we do as much as i did mention earlier that we um and i tend to mention it pretty much on all of our podcasts like in an unscheduled way i just sort of dive into it but um yeah we do have a structure here so i call it sort of a wide, wide linear approach to the show so um i'll uh, i'll state it even though we regularly deviate from it but we'll just do it symbolically anyway so um we have our sort of weekly catch-up which we're going to dive into now um an overview of the week's episode which we're kind of sort of essentially doing as well um uh naz i don't know if you um have heard any of the uh, other podcasts uh either from the uh, network interactive artistry uh, or um uh, or for this particular show but i tend to say that like um where where other shows are like a, a series of courses that like people bring you know one meal after another like our shows tend to just like have everything kind of almost mixed in uh, like a cake and like each episode is yeah. like a we're freshly baked cake yeah exactly so <laughs> yay further confirmation that i am a um uh, I've already become an old woman, uh, and uh, yeah. and and I'm just like a tattooed grandma that lives by the sea. Yeah. That's basically who I am. Yes. Um, anyway, so um, uh, after that, you know, after the overview, we'll dive into a bit of news, um, which for a while we expect there to be not many because you know they're just working away at it. You know, I think uh, we're a little we're we're expecting logan and i've been speculating that because of the like postcard tease and um definitely what's been revealed with the, the sort of splash image at uh, gendesign.co.jp um that we could be seeing something maybe at the, the the faintest teaser i would say um at e3 this year um so we'll do that and also i want to we have to obviously get naz's thoughts on um on what, where the new game might go and all yeah, that so yeah. yeah um then we'll have a quick uh, reddit rundown so we'll jump on um sort of our birthplace which is you know where i found <laughs> the awesome uh, uman the inimitable aka logan uh <laughs> wow, nice memory there. yeah i dig it no sure Impre- make people pals like kin- kindred people make impressions that's how it is um and so we'll do that and then we'll each pick out um Oh, it's totally up to you, Naz, if you want to, if you have the Reddit in front of you, um, uh, to sort of, if you wanted to highlight and we can give any, just like creators like yourself, people who put like high effort posts, um, uh, we'll sort of um, talk about this, their sort of work. And what that does is it kind of, you know, they may, on the off chance that they hear the show, they can hear themselves and just be like, whoa, uh, a little bit of a, a little bit of a shout out there. So that, um, again, the whole, the whole thing is to kind of showcase the community of, of folks who, um, uh, who, who who so appreciate and, and resonate with, with the man and, and his work and, and his team's work for sure. So after that, we'll have our main topic um, and then she'll support our shout outs, which uh, this is the running joke is every time I am in the overview as I am right now, I stop the show and I, as soon as the, the mention, the first mention of supporters is made, I have to immediately go to the Patreon as I'm doing right now. And we just had an $8 patron join Mr. Mm. Andrew, yes, uh, jumping on the eight dollar tier. Uh, I know, which is so so kindred and kind. And Naz, I, I I'll just throw it to you. It, the the feeling of someone recognizing your work, it, this it's it's hard to find words for it, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, a, a big part of um part of uh my job is uh, all my pay comes through Patreon, so I totally yeah. understand. Shout out. It sort of means so much when you see it. Yeah. Yeah, just to get that ping and um, shout out to everyone supporting Naz for her phenomenal work as well. I need to say that off off the off the bat because her work is one of the most well. Like I just came off of um, art school where you know I won't name names, but needless to say, some of the, it's just you know Naz and I and and Logan we could probably talk for an entire other other show another whole dedicated mm-hmm. podcast to like the nature of art and what should be considered art. But um, let's just say a lot of low effort crap is is often often ends up uh, with high 
high price tags and um, with the exposure that it just frankly doesn't deserve. Again, I'm, we're all entitled to our opinions as long as we're respectful of one another. Um, and to see uh, Nas's work being supported the way it is, is such an affirmation that yes, like Patreon is one of the best uh, ways for just the universe, to, for justice in mm -hmm. the universe is like worthwhile creators getting their due. So, and Nas embodies that for sure. Um, and, and, and yeah, when we, we take, we take, a moment to sort of yeah congratulate Naz on, on how far she's going and we, we hope that uh -huh. yeah for sure <laughs> that things are progressed for I, um, yeah go for it Logan I'm looking at uh, Naz's Patreon right now and I gotta say I love this post from from June 2017 mm. um, but I don't know if there's an update on this and, and maybe we can talk about it because obviously you know I oh, want to yeah, go, go. Um, <laughs> get into the, the the whole Trico uh thing but but um there's this post where you say you know I've gotten some requests for Trico um but honestly, you know, I'm, and what you say is I'm after several K for him. And if I don't get offers in that realm, I'll just be happy to keep him. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so that's, you know, you have to pay for, if you want your very own real life Trico. Then yeah, yes. literally. <laughs> just do it. Yeah. Just, It'd be um, cheaper to um, buy a dog and stick feathers on it, I think. <laughs> yeah, and, and Nas never change. Just stick to it, okay? You put hours and hours of work, and look, we it's all this bullshit of um, of relativity. Is like, well, we, we all put in our hours at, like, normal jobs or whatever. Um, we know that mm. that results in a paycheck of about a 1,000, so asking for anything yeah. less than, like, a couple grand for what you did is just, yeah. it's ridiculous. So, again, uh, big ups to, um, uh, to, yeah. to yourself for that. But, yeah, continue, Logan. Is yeah. the uh, Trico still with you, though? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, I had a couple of people <laughs> offer to buy him and then sort of mess me around, and, and during that period I got so attached to him that I just I couldn't let it go. I mean, okay. I've had some pretty generous offers for him, but th he's almost priceless to me. For I put hundreds oh. and hundreds of hours into making him, and, and no, it almost gets to the point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it was, sorry, it says $500, 400 hours. Right. Wow. <laughs> Incredible. 400 plus hours. 400 plus hours. And and how much are you um uh, how, how much is the how much would you be charging? You know, if if someone wanted to buy something like him that took, you know, 400 hours or so, I'd want, you know, upwards of $4,000 for that. Very good. But, um, Very good. You know, it just depends on if there's a buyer out there who well, wants speaking, to buy a spe real-life trico. <laughs> speaking as your manager and as your chief financial advisor, I would suggest we go no lower than 5000 okay? Five is a good round yeah, number. That's what I wanted to say, but uh, some people do balk at um, those kind of figures, so. Yeah, you know, it's simple as that. Yeah. I've had a couple of things around that, but um, at this point, I'm just so attached to him that I don't know. I'm sure if someone offered me a million dollars, I would um, take it, but uh, this, <laughs> <laughs> you'd have to pry him from my hands. So. Yes, that's right. That's right. And, and again, you know, that's going to tie into, we're going to have a mini chat, obviously, about Last Guardian, because, you know, Nas uh, jumping on this episode because of her work on the Traco. We hope to see each of the Colossi. You, you, we're holding you to it. He's 16. I was actually, oh, in pre preparation for, for this today, <laughs> I was going through and watching um, a playthrough of, of Shadow of the Colossus and I was thinking which one I would like mm. to make if mm. I was to make one. So okay. that is something I'm thinking about. So. Well, let us leave that as a mini teaser. And yeah. um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold you to a the most strong the strongest of promises a podcast promise I'm gonna hold you to this <laughs> Naz so for the for the um um for the Colossus you do choose you have to jump back onto the show for the a podcast and speak on that Colossus's episode you like that yeah I don't think I can get it done that quickly <laughs> yeah yeah we'll see. <laughs> Listen, if I, you start if if you start right now while we're recording. Then yes, then. yeah, just start feathering, yeah. But the podcast yep. promise is binding. It cannot yeah. be it oh. cannot be undone. <laughs> Sorry, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh my god, I'm kidding. All right, but let's um crack on you guys. Um I'm already digging the vibe of 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 um of yourself. Now as you you got to just like even if there isn't like whatever projects like feel free to jump on. I've, it's kind of something you kind of can Logan you're picking up on it. She's just she's a, she's a, she's a groovy groovy person. Let's uh yeah. let's leave that door open for yourself now, for sure. Um so, weekly catch-up. I'll throw it to Logan. Um, how has your past week been in sort of Fumito Ueda and, um, and sort of anything in that sort of sphere? It's been good. Uh, in terms of Ueda, um, uh, I've been trying to, to just, I mean, I, I, I got back into the Reddits, um, which I sort of forgot to, to subscribe back to after I had unsubscribed from them <laughs> uh, due to spoilers. Okay. And, and, you know, there's really so much content there, and I see something and I'm like, oh, why didn't I 
see this and put it on the blog when it when it came out. And it's like, damn it, uh, but, you know, if I put it on now, are, are people gonna, yeah. you know, do people on do the people that follow me on Tumblr go on Reddit? Are they gonna be like, why is he only posting this right now? I already saw this on Reddit two weeks ago. <laughs> those are the, those are the kinds of thoughts that they go through my head. But um, yeah, now now I'm back checking Reddit again. That's um, awesome. But I mean, in in terms of the game, like I really haven't um been playing it lately. Like I, it was really um the combination of uh playing um number 16 synovia uh three times in Whoa. normal time attack and failing because of his ai that needs to be patched um where he just stands still and and like swipes at the floor for like not doing anything um that like caused me to lose uh three separate times and it was that was a little demoralizing and then it's also like I kind of think about these seventy nine golden coins, and I'm like, I can't, I can't. They're taunting you, aren't they? Like, that's gonna, yeah. Like you, you, you need to, you know, from what I've seen, you basically need to do a hard mode playthrough, do hard time attack uh, to get all the items, and then you need to do several more hard uh, hard mode playthroughs because some of the golden coins are in the secret garden. Um, and you know, the reason it needs to be in hard mode is because you need that little, uh, parachute glider thingy, the uh, cape to, to get to some of them. So it's like, that is many hours, you know, and I, mm. I really, the hat goes off to, to people who have done it. Mm. Um, there have been some, uh, there was one person who was messaging me on Tumblr about, about how they'd done it. I mean, that's, that was, and that was a few weeks ago. Um, and that's amazing. Like, I don't, <laughs> you know, I have a lot of <laughs> devotion to, to the world of, of these games. But um, I don't know if I can devote that much time to it's accomplishing crazy. this. It's yeah. crazy. You definitely see, like, again, it's these different tiers of, I mean, not that, like, you know, segmented out of, like, oh, more devoted, puts in more time, is bigger, is bigger appreciator. But no, I think it's, like, yeah, whatever you can obviously make time for. But then it's just about, like, your own personal connection. It's totally subjective to, uh, um, you know, like, in terms of how much. Um, I, but I am like I just all I'm saying is look I, I tend to get surprised too by just like how in depth people go and then like hearing that like for example I just um uh you know I'm going slow guys I'm going on the remake I've I've just taken down um Ballas and uh Quadra nice. and Quadratus um so uh yeah uh, but it's it's more than any more than any other creator i think for Mitchell's works if if anything just for their scarcity it is a, is is something to, to to cherish so um totally yeah and to savor for sure so did you have any other riffs on on um, your amazing uh, uh and colossus slaying activities logan no no that's all i gotta say about that right i dig now. it i dig it um and yeah. yourself yeah and now as yourself how has your past week uh and a bit been in uh sort of yeah for me to wear any of his works and, and such um pretty much just reading trico every morning trico every yeah. morning yay oh <laughs> envious <laughs> yeah, <new barrels. laughs> yes but I, um, no, I need to um need to buy the remaster version i'm really keen to play it okay yeah. we're gonna go go fund me okay listeners everyone jump onto the yeah. i'm posting it now posting the link okay no, but we'll we'll, uh, we'll make something happen for sure but yeah needless to say like you need to make that uh, gosh come on nas come on i have been playing the okami remake if oh that's, that's good oh yeah yeah obviously yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you also and this to you as well logan it's like uh, I, i'll throw it to you obviously with like fumito Ueda related but you know fumito Ueda makes games games are also a thing you can you can dip into a bit of that yeah. as well so uh, i um yeah i mentioned before uh we started recording that i've been playing resident evil revelations 2 which has been nice. a pretty damn fun game mm. better than the Re better than revelations 1 which was good but revelations 2 is um uh, I really like the setting. It's this random Russian island, um, and uh, they do some cool things um, with uh, having two different player characters mm -hmm. uh, that you can switch back and forth between. Yeah, it, it's been fun, and I'm uh, once I beat it, I'm going to go right on to Resident Evil 7, which wow. I am both excited and terrified of playing, <laughs> so we will see how that goes. You're just going to go VR, right? No, no turning back, right? No, oh, no, I don't have <laughs> PSVR, and if I did, it, it would... It would Definitely probably not. give me a heart attack or something, so I'm I'm kind of glad that it. <laughs> Goodness me! Oh, speaking of VR, has has anyone here, or no, even I'll just I'll widen the pool as well because you know VR hasn't found its way into that many people's houses. So uh, the Trico experience, you know, the VR, um, it's downloadable for oh, free. Yeah, talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so have you either played that Logan or Nas or? Nope. 
<laughs> I yeah. saw Jack Septic I play. Oh yeah, yeah, he's cool. Uh, so um, yeah, I, I, I'm assuming probably not. Do you know anyone with PSVR, Nas? No, I actually um, haven't used any virtual reality yet, so I'm really yeah. keen to find someone that has, so I can give it a go. So there you go, fantastic. So yeah, um, yeah, I haven't yet. I think I'll probably be a lazy second or third gen VR person if that even happens. So I'm, I'm a bit trepidatious about. Uh, becoming increasingly disconnected from like what's real uh but you know again i don't want to be a prude so um i'd be kind of open to trying it so because uh, i just heard i could hear it oh it just like crawled on my skin i could hear all the listeners eye rolling being like <laughs> way to go grandma just staying in like a 1999 you know with your uh backwards ways no I'm, I'm open to it i just want to make sure that like we we firmly know what is real um booty boo okay fantastic so i'm Oh yeah, I suppose I've been sort of giving feedback on my own because I always forget to do this when I do the roundtables. I forget myself. It's like damn. <laughs> so uh, for me, um, I'll just I have to give big ups to one of the main proponents of Shadow of the Colossus. He's sp he's spoken publicly about um, its virtues, its um, uh, its standing as um, one of the uh, key pillars of um, signifying the legitimacy of games as an art form, as a storytelling medium uh, that is more that resonates more with like life itself uh, than any other because of the fact that like life as is as our games is an interactive experience um which is kind of our, in, an interactive artistry we say life is an interactive art which is is reflect um is reflective of, of um of what this person has said regularly and this person is none other none other than uh, Guillermo del Toro who has um yep. not only incorporated um he's directly said i was directly inspired by shadow of the colossus for uh the um the elemental in um hellboy 2 he said that that was just direct inspiration so open open shot uh he's also spoken about the um the game being the most moving game experience he's ever had um and we see in a lot of his works there's um a bit of shared palette uh, a little bit of um shared design aspects uh, he certainly loves his crumbling ruins uh the man in in some of the the Hellboy stuff that he's done, and definitely Pan's Labyrinth. So there's a strand of connected tissue there. So he swept the Oscars recently. So we shout out um, our tangentially related, fantastic uh, Mexican uncle Guillermo del Toro on Fumito <laughs> Fumito Oedo podcast. In case any of his, uh, uh, in case he or any of his like uh, people who might know him might be listening. So shout out to you for um, yeah, as he yeah. put it, kicking down the door. Uh, he, he sort of raised his sort of statue and said, hey, for those um, who are, are as Fumito Ueda is very much like, I'm, they're just not interested in telling ultra realistic, uh, show, you know, just stuff that's rooted in realism, like, oh, like cars and uh, mobile phones and tablets and all this modern trappings. They said, like, we can tell um, fables, we can tell um, a socially relevant, a timelessly relevant stories in the form of parable and, and fairy tale and have them be so effective at, at, like to be able to move us on the level they do but then to have that recognition from um, it's the highest accolade that can be given in that medium uh, and um, it's it won't be it won't be long before we see Fumito Ueda awarded uh, similarly um, for even though I did mention on one of the previous episodes he was awarded a lifetime achievement award uh, from uh, the Drago d'Oro which is the Golden Dragon in Italy uh, or is I think it might be a French award but um, as the game awards you know <laughs> sort of start to ramp up well it's we're gonna see the like lifetime achievement award for Fumito Ueda I hope so. for sure for sure awesome so I figured I'd mention that's kind of been my thing and um and then yeah as I said going slow you know why why rush why rush savor it you know amazing um Naz do you have um PlayStation Plus by any chance no I don't okay well um again I'll, I'll I'm, I'm i'm penning notes about like some kind of gofundme thing for nas to get her <laughs> a copy of the uh yeah absolutely we'll make that happen so that's sort of our weekly catch-up um done and dusted oh my gosh hey logan we're staying on schedule this is crazy nas is like a good luck charm for like <laughs> like <laughs> efficiency uh awesome so overview of the week um of this week's episode so yeah we'll be diving into valor soon enough which um i'm gonna challenge myself in the edit so every time we sort of cut away to uh uh sort of that main uh, topic so as we go colossus by colossus um um i'll be playing obviously the the stinger of music and stuff like that. So again, I just sort of mentioned that here. I am, by the way, this would be insufferable if I didn't edit myself with this. Uh, Naz, I, 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 that's one of the great formats of being able to edit as well is that like, yeah. I can just kind of like, um, 
as as Jeff Goldblum puts it, he's like he's a very hemming and ha- hemming and hawing kind of person. And I <laughs> like Logan is preternaturally patient with me. So I, and I appreciate you being patient oh. as well. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Awesome. Okay, so well, news again. It's very minimal, listeners. Um, he, they're they're very much. I mean, let's why not, Logan? Let's give it a Google. Let's give it a Google. <laughs> let's Logan, give what a Google. Let's give Fumito Ueda a Google, mate. All right, and, you uh, think something new might have come up? I mean, what... <laughs> Fumito Ueda declared president of the United. Oh wait, 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 wait. No, that's yeah, not. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. There's a no. It's just some some reviews from February. Shadow of the email. classes. That's okay. <laughs> Um, and yeah, so um, we here are, as far as my camp is concerned, p- quite positive towards the, as I call it, the remaster piece. But I really appreciate having Logan on the show and Nick on the previous show to just sort of make sure, give the kudos and the ups to the original to make sure that that one, it is the original. And even Blue Point would admit is like, we're, we're just, we're an honorary museum in the shape of the original. Simple as that, you know? Um which I figured I'd mention. Um, so for the, you, I know you haven't played it yet, Nas, but what are your impressions of the remake so far? Uh, I've been watching it a lot today. I, I'm just flabbergasted by it, to be honest. It mm. looks, you know, especially when you're going through the forest and the terrain, it almost looks like you're riding through a photograph. It's I'm true. Like pretty blown yeah. away. Wow. If yep. you could see some of the uh, some of the photo mode screenshots people have taken, mm. I mean, you, if you if you showed it to a person who didn't know that it was a game, I really think that, that you could fool somebody. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I, I um, grow with horses, so I also appreciate the horse improvements. Yeah, <laughs> agro, agro. There, yeah. See, there's the accent. They've really improved him. Yeah. Also, well, okay, here's our our mini horse tangent, because I love horses very much as well, Naz. They're <laughs> great. And um, Logan, can we can you can you join our pony club right here? Do you like horses? Uh, they're 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 all right. I don't know. <laughs> okay, many many thousand. Like Half of our listenership are horses, man. You just offended so many. I can't even believe it. Like I can hear the mournful. I cannot tell a lie. <laughs> That's so great. I just thought of an Aqua Teen reference there. I cannot tell a lie. Um, uh, you listen to uh, Rick and uh, you listen to. Do you watch Rick and Morty uh, by any chance, uh, Nas? Yeah, yeah, I'm, fantastic. I'm all up to date. I'm Great. Yeah. So Justin Roiland, um, he yeah, there's like a, he did a voice in Aquatine where like he plays mm. an anthropomorphic uh, hot dog um, called Honest Abe Lincoln, and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, L- uh, Logan. I, I didn't see that one. Uh, yeah, that's okay. I'll have to send you the link. Logan um, is is he keeps track of my tangents. I have a certain tangent allowance, and he tells yeah. me when Do I've you? reached. How, 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 am I sixty percent, uh, or am I am I close to the? That's it. I think I have. I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll see when it gets okay. to five a.m. for me, okay. and, and if I'm still. Um... It's like Albert plays plays multipass. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I know. <laughs> that's all good. That's all good. So there's our mini news segment there. We're, no, but guys, it, uh, it it will it will ramp up. We we I think I, I have a feeling in my in my old ninety year old bones that we're actually going to hear some news. Um, with not too long from because as you enter like the mid March, that's when you start hearing rumblings of who's going to, uh, you know, rumors and such happening with E three. So don't be surprised. This is a bit of a shorter news yeah. Uh, section. Yeah, go ahead. GDC is, yeah. is coming right up. Uh, I think very soon. Um, right. I don't think we're going to see anything there, but it is happening. So yeah, the hell not. that's right. You know, uh, in uh, twelve days, according to my app. So there you go. Yeah. Coolies. So let us jump into quickly. We'll keep it a quick thing because we want to dive into Valis. And um, uh, I figured I'd mention here. Um, uh, Nas is uh, the guest previous to you, um, who joined us was a gentleman by the name of Nicholas Sutner, um, recipient of the very first interactive artistry testament of amelioration for significant mm-hmm. contribution to the growth and maturation of the interactive medium. I'm not reading off of anything that's just implanted in my brain. Um, so we celebrate him for sure, and we anyone and I say this about like any like you know Nas for what you do with with it's any it's about anyone connecting with and elevating this medium, you know. And that's why sculptor is the word. I know you see affectionately on your patron, you say, "Oh, me and other plushies," you know, like that's like the word for you guys, like plushsters or something. But uh, you're a full blown artist Thank to me, you. and you elevate you elevate the medium with your work. You really do. That's so nice of you. Thank I do. you. No, absolutely. And so and so, yeah. This gentleman here, he uh, was recently he was interviewed before us. The last show he was on was um, the kind of funny show with Greg Miller, who is, uh, you know, yeah 
10, 10 year plus veteran of of, uh, of the industry, probably interviewed uh, Ueda a few times, and then Nick himself has interviewed Ueda in person and via email a couple of times. So it was good to kind of get um, direct impressions from him, from that. And uh, I would just, yeah, at, at this point, sort of mention that like we, um, with uh, each of the, he sort of, he wrote this book that we're going to be actually reading section by section, um, uh, portions of because we want to we want to encourage people to, to to actually go out and and um go over to boss fight books which is um where you can buy his book it's simply called shadow of the colossus and uh the chapter that we'll be reading from today um and again now this was so surreal we got started on this show right and out of nowhere this at at literally as we're about to start this sort of colossus by colossus we come across i come across nick's work i message him on twitter he's gracious and inhumanly kind and patient and and generous enough to um uh, to give us his time and he writes this book where it's literally a travelogue like we were preparing for a journey like this and then he's like oh by the way here's a book for your entire endeavor enjoy <laughs> You know, <laughs> exactly. So he's our Gandalf. We, we affectionately call him our Gandalf yeah. who sort of uh, put us on our journey. So the chapter we'll be reading from is called Raise Thy Sword by the Light, which is the first line from the first of Dorman's hints. So I figure I'd mention that too for our new listeners and for our guest Naz to sort of set the format going forward. Lovely. So um, let's do it. Let's make it really quick, um, uh, Logan. So Reddit rundown. So do you have the Reddit in front of you, my friend? Uh, I, I did a few minutes ago. I'll get it up again. <laughs> you fail me for the last time. No, I'm kidding. Um, Naz, do you... Um, actually, I haven't even asked. Do you use Reddit at all, uh, Naz? Uh, not very often. I have an account, but I usually just post my stuff okay. on there. And, you need yeah. to... Okay, you need to forget about... Forget you ever knew desktop Reddit. It's, it's dead. For mm. me, desktop Reddit is like looking at a messy storeroom uh where like yeah. the front of the store it is so you, and the, and here you so you obviously wouldn't want to spend time in a messy like dusty storeroom that is just full of data you want to go to the premium amazing experience which is this damn app and this is i'm not like sponsored by reddit or anything although feel free to contact me it is the Thank most you. life-changing it, it it gave birth to interactive artistry as we know it it's so streamlined you need to be downloading you have the iphone or any of the smart devices yeah yeah i can it it's sure. on another level just turn the night mode on uh it's really nice and like easy on the eyes and just sign up to as many communities as possible it's like reddit was always made meant for the mobile app and um we'll be posting your episode and links to your work on the um the, the team ico reddit um and uh, just help us build this community now it's 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 really great i think what are we sitting on now <laughs> um 2693 so let's um let's get that to 3000 for sure i reckon and then ever onwards so that'll be really cool um do you want to take the first one uh logan yeah sure i'm, I'm gonna look on my desktop reddit here and uh okay. find a post um <laughs> the the top post on the uh, shadow of class reddit right now is really cool photo mode screenshot uh where wander is shooting an arrow like right uh into the corner of the shot and the arrow is like super close um, oh nice that's yeah that's a really really awesome one well done well, who's um, the user who did that uh, yes, that is from uh, Leonardo uh, Viz EU, I guess. V I Z E U. Ah, cool. So very cool. Um, then I'm a Team Eco Reddit. Uh, I know there was a couple videos. Um, yeah, that Riku Seven Kun guy. He's like the the big new. Uh, uh, seems like the big new Team Eco YouTuber on the block. Oh, cool. um, nice. He's been doing videos for a few months, but I think really recently he's been posting them on Reddit. Um, he's sort of like a new, a new nomad of a sort. I did. And, it. um, yeah, yeah, he's been posting videos about, uh, beating Quadratus and, and Kuramuri with a wooden stick somehow. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, no way. Well, yeah. then needless to say, we need to get this, uh, this fellow on the show. Um, so consider this, yeah. if you're listening, yeah, yeah. my friend, an official invite, um, uh, direct message away and, uh, we'll make that happen. Cause that would be fantastic. Yeah. And anyone showing. Like again, I said, I've. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Like I said, you know, I've been away from the Reddit for a while, so I could probably go through a whole bunch of stuff and just say, ooh, this is cool, this is cool, this is cool. But, yeah, but I'll, I know. I'll, I I'll throw it to you. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, easy. So we have a fantastic um, painting uh, uh, by user Topeka97. My girlfriend made me this a while back, thought I'd share, which is um, just a uh, corrupted uh, wonder looking at... Uh, Mono, who is yeah, you can read all sorts of meanings into her expression there. <laughs> yeah, I don't Whether know, are they, they going to fight or? <laughs> yeah, concern, worry, love, and then that's the best of art that you want. That so you're getting an upvote from me. Um, 
<laughs> and then we have it. I like to jump in for this. Sometimes you miss out on entire amazing uh, strings of quality. And Naz, you are about to embark on an amazing journey with the Reddit app because just jumping on this thing in the middle of the day and then just scrolling through all the comments and because it's so beautifully presented, you can have these great, like there's a, a, a subreddit called, um, uh, it's like, a, or like there's, there's so many, like, or there's one called like, dad part like dad jokes for example and so you'll yeah. read you'll read a dad joke uh and then underneath that there'll be 50 other amazing dad jokes about that dad joke so you need to any reddit post you go to you always have to jump into comments so we have um yeah so that's from that user there topic 97 and then the best comment I, i'm gonna upload it is uh uh chuck gopher says who are you i'm you but stronger <laughs> it's just like it's fantastic because it's like two people looking at each other okay so um I think I'm pretty good on 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 this. While well, we have a kind of a Artax tastic, I've always thought of the parallel between Atreyu and Artax and um, uh, Agro and uh, Wanda. Yeah. And we see you user uh, look W sixty four. I love that you can pet Agro in the game. And we see um, this is a much lighter hearted scene. Obviously, with this photo mode here, uh, you know Agro obviously isn't drowning or anything, but it's like I, I've always had a little bit of never-ending story vibes, um, especially with Trico. Like the, the, oh my god, the Falcor vibes are so strong. They're so real, <laughs> the Falcor. <laughs> yeah, and the the big red. Um, you me- Naz, you remember Clifford the big red dog? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, big time, big time. That just that archetype of like, uh, like large sort of um, fantastical beast that like sweeps you off to adventure and like protects you and stuff. It's really cool. Um, so that's me done actually for the Reddit rundown. Um, there, this again, I must echo what uh, Logan was saying as I've been away for a bit, uh, just on account of spoilers. And look, user Albert Kesser will be discussing the first Colossus shortly. If you'd like to be on Fumito Ueda podcast as our co-host comment or message will also be reading out Valor stories so feel free to share those too which i do have by the way so we'll be reading one of those uh and look isn't this cute naz february 19th that's when we planned on recording <laughs> yeah so funny so funny Got there eventually. i know we did we did get there so i for my reddit readout i usually like to pick something where it's like um uh, like a speculative thing um but you know what um i'll pick out user tg mana samana which one of the colossi will you choose as the most impacting during your personal journey the point of my question is to gather your favorite experience um your individual experience regarding your favorite colossus in the forbidden lands you might also consider these factors while sharing your opinion this is really well structured very endearing um yeah. the way you discovered one of the colossi the way you you were impressed by a location uh the way the boss battle characterized your experience and this is like a, a, a an employment form <laughs> it's great um we we could almost just cover these yeah just save this thread and then I'm cover just... them when we when we actually go through those colossi um all due respect uh use a tg mana samana as the highest form of compliment we're just gonna st- we're just gonna steal this it's great there you go you don't you don't have copyright on words um but yeah i'm kidding <laughs> needless to say this is beautiful so um last question is any specific characteristics of the colossi that you love this is phenomenal this is literally what i was going to do what is this this continued blessing we keep get, getting with the show logan oh my god it's crazy this is perfect i'm actually gonna literally as you said logan i'm gonna use this um for mm-hmm. sure going forward so we'll we'll do that round table obviously when we get to valis um because that's perfect it perfectly suits that but uh, now as i figured i'd mention from episode one and i hope i'm knocking wood here uh we've literally received like a mini blessing for each of the shows like in before our first show we got a a postcard um from like gen design even though they'd been quiet for like months yeah. we got this we- Awesome. For the record, we did not get We got a personally, it, they sent it to us <laughs> in person. I got actually, they came, they drove up. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. by okay, 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 okay. Fine. Thanks. I just wanted to feel special, Logan. I know. I just wanted to clarify in case, in case Naz thought we like had some kind of pen pals with really the waiter. Um, we yeah, are. I was thinking, where's my postcard? I know. Oh, sad. Heartbroken emoji. Yeah. Um, that's no, crazy. But yeah, oh, I actually would love, now you just got me thinking, how cool will it be once once we start um, seeing a bit more from this new title, obviously to get the actual title, but um, yeah, I'd love to get like a postcard set. Just literally thought of how cool that would be. Um, but anyway, so the, the closing comment from this um, user here is, anyway, I hope you could try to share your favorite moment related to the majestic experience that you were living thanks to this game. So a really beautifully earnest comment. So I just wanted to shout you out and uh, upvoting you and I'll be posting a link to um, the timestamp 
info when we mention you to all the people I mention, which, believe it or not, I do struggle in keeping track of because I often do that. I'm like, I'll shout you out. I'll shout this out. Da, 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 da. So, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I, I tried to, um, to yeah. kind of, there was one episode where I went through it and I was like, here's, I gathered some links and, and commented on it. Yeah. Um, Cause that was, there was one episode where we mentioned a lot of stuff. I just wanted to make sure any of the listeners yeah. uh, could have gotten to see that. Yeah, for sure. Um, if you didn't have a readout for yourself, though, you totally can, if you want, man, um, I'm happy to jump into our main topic. If you had, well, I already had mine. I was, I was. Oh, know, that that was the run. That was the rundown, time. man. The rundown is you like kind of breeze over and then. The oh, there's a rundown and a read. Ah, okay, yeah, well, boy. So if you have one that you no, want to dive um, into and do a roundtable on, we can do that. Yeah, you know, I, I had this post that I mentioned a few weeks ago about the Last Guardian, but yes. I do think I'm going to save that for another time. Ooh, um, just because okay. it's it deserves a bit of a longer um, okay. discussion. So that's we'll, right. We'll talk about that uh, in a future episode. Too easy. Well, if that's okay with yourself, Logan and Naz, I'm happy to crack on with reading from um, "Raise Your yeah. Sword, Raise Raise Thy Sword by the Light." If that's all right. Go for it. Fantastic. The pause was to allow for the music. Sorry. Anyway, "Raise Thy Sword by the Light." The opening cinematic ends as the camera transitions into live gameplay, and I'm given control for the first time. Moving Wanda around is a joy, both in execution and for the fact that there's no particular rush or threat as I prepare myself for this world and, it, and its as yet unseen battles. The shrine is empty, save for Mono lying still, and my horse Agro quietly exploring nearby while I come to grips with the controls. Wanda's gait is more mature than Eko's, the earned confidence of an adventurer rather than that of a resilient child his jumps and fearless lunges forward that can cover a lot of ground. If his sword is unsheathed, he'll run with it ninja-like, pointing it down and back along his side. And many of his basic movements are contextual. He'll leap from a running horse or simply dismount with a step, with a step down from a, from a stilled one. Agro is a star in her own right, a living, breathing companion and partner in crime for wonder, not simply a vehicle for speed or safety. And when I'm not riding her, she'll wander off on her own, or rein up dramatically alongside me without prompting, or stay close to, uh, or stay close when staying close is called for. A uh, little mini bracket here from me. Uh, what you said um, earlier, Nas, about like um, being in a living painting, absolutely. Mm. All of the horses' animations, like you could just literally photo mode any of them, and just there you go. There's a painting. It's just beautiful, yeah. you know, so dramatic. So. Um, by the way, both to, to both yourselves, like what I'm doing here is um, reading through the chapter will provide like a guideline for, for us both. So feel free to stop me at any point to jump in yeah, if you well, have a riff. Yeah, go ahead. No, Logan. I, I do have to ask you, I mean, how much are you planning to read? Oh, not all of it. Oh, thing. not all of it. Oh, my God. Of course not. Yeah, we're just going to be know, here. I think <laughs> yeah. we have both read it after all so really we could we could go through it you know pick out nick's uh best uh observations yeah yeah um, yeah and then just tell everyone you know you want to you want to get the audiobook then you can just get the book oh yeah so. absolutely oh no on no level was i planning on reading the whole thing no um so <laughs> the the whole thing is um yeah with this particular well hey hey listeners we're getting started it's okay we're gonna be so smooth by like episode 20 you, you don't even believe it so but the idea is yeah so for while i'm reading that kind of main chunk it'll just be the music playing under me and all that and it'll just be, it'll be mood setting way to go logan okay. jeez honestly we I'm just, sorry. I, I'm just, kidding. I, I I'm just kidding. wasn't I'm like kidding. I'm kidding. we didn't we didn't discuss this. So I was like, <laughs> I know that's why it's the most beautifully well planned. Like we are so professional because we just plan as we record. It's fantastic. Um, no, it's all good. But yeah, I'll I'll wrap up this paragraph here and then we'll uh, jump in right. to the topic ourselves, do roundtables, and then um, I'm probably gonna be skimming through Nick's uh like chapter as I as we discuss in our own experiences with this Colossus um and sort of use those and just again just sort of tease people and be like check out the book go and as you say you know uh audiobook um or, or or the physical copy or the digital copy you know so too easy but yeah we're all good um uh, on that one logan are we like i didn't mean i was just joking earlier by the way yeah yeah, yeah no and, and i don't want to sound like i'm like nitpicking here <laughs> no man i, I love like, it frankly wondering <laughs> It's important. Again, Naz, like Logan literally is the, the, the 50%. Like he, he, he balances out the show, makes sure that's like, by the way, Albert, do you know why are we, why are we doing this? <laughs> like, are, are we good? <laughs> is that good? And I actually really need that. So I appreciate it. Awesome. So, um, 
So speaking of aggro, she's unpredictable, as animals are, but a fierce friend and really my only one in this world. As we leave the confines of the shrine, this, the true breadth of this place, the Forbidden Lands, as they're known, becomes evident, and with it a mounting sense of adventure. It's breathtaking. Rolling, windswept hills and crags flow off into the distance ahead of me, overcast skies above burning... Uh, 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 Overcast skies above, burning with sunlight just behind the clouds. That's some very nice uh, phrasing there, burning with sunlight. Oh, indeed, indeed. Um, so I'll finish this paragraph and then we'll jump in uh, yourselves. You too, you lovelies. Um, the camera stays low, following behind and keeping Wanda off center, maintaining focus on the landscape. Even while casually exploring, there's a sense of cinematography to the framing, some distant director playing up the drama of each shot while maintaining a visual balance. So there is the first couple paragraphs from the Raise Thy Sword by the Light chapter. If you were intrigued by that, definitely jump on Boss Fight Books. And um, it's it's very, it's it's totally just like a click and easy process from there. You can even do it. I actually did it on my iPhone. There was a couple of uh, US $4 actually. Um, now, so just jump on, grab it. It's a really beautiful book. So beautifully yep. written. And, and, you know, we're just, we're just plugging this out of love, you know, yeah, out of we're love. thankful to Nick. He was on last week. You know, we don't have a deal with boss fight books. Yeah. There's we're, no we're deal. Just, um, yeah. Yeah. You know, Nick's, Nick's devotion to, to the, to these games and, and um, his yeah. insight is very valuable. Yeah. And that, and that's sort of our, our prep, sufficient enough of a premise to want to sort of help promote his work and again Naz uh, with yourself joining in it's kind of what we want to set the tone for which is um, people joining in uh, out of having contributed to um, creating works inspired by or you know directly referencing um, from which it works and and we just wanted to continue uh, continue that here so um, yeah and yeah Naz isn't like giving us anything we just we just love anyone who who works on this on on, on anything that elevates and and showcases this creative in this medium so that's yeah figured i'd add to what you said there logan so valis let us begin with our wonderful guest who you may now dive as deep as you want into any thoughts whatsoever again you can even use that awesome post which we found why not uh i just saved it albert you 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 have to i'm just speaking to myself here make sure you have things <laughs> available my friend I, just, I have it right here. Yeah, okay. Could you, Logan, take it away, my friend. Thanks. Tag team. Go okay, ahead. I mean, sure. So so I guess we're going to be discussing Valis, and we're going to try to pull as much out of that as we possibly can. Yeah. Um, and I guess the factors are listed by uh, PG Manasamana in his post, um, which I guess we're, we are now using almost like there's some sort of oh, official survey guidelines. <laughs> um, I dig it. <laughs> Um, are uh, the way you discovered the Colossi, the way where if you were impressed by the location, uh, the way the boss battle characterized your experience, and any specific characteristic of the Colossi. Beautiful. So let's do yeah. roundtables on each one of them. So the very first one, uh, if you want to tackle that one there, um, uh, Naz. So and so the very first one, I'm just looking for. Oh, why am I? I'm just failing. Why? I just, I literally just saved it. What's wrong with me? Okay, cool. All right. So the way you discovered the Colossi. Now, obviously, um, there's no alternate ways really to discover these. They have their dwelling places. It's not dynamic open world. But I think what we'll probably do is just how, where we were at, maybe emotionally or like in terms of our impressions of the surrounds, what that kind of like so instead of the way you discovered it's like how did it how did it sort of build up for you and, and what were your thoughts on the approach to the colossi etc uh Nas? i just i think the thing i most remember was riding aggro i think yeah. when you're riding her she just gives this real feeling of like power when you're riding her and yeah. her stride is so massive and it almost feels like you're just holding on for dear life yeah. so i think that's what i most remember about what first playing and first traveling um in the game just thinking you know hold on tight sort of thing so um yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um throw it to logan how about yourself what was um a little riff for yourself there regarding agro and uh, regarding yeah just like the what, what the, the question well, yeah, I mean, as I previously said, you know, the whole intro segment of the game is extremely well designed. Um, you know, they put you out in this world and you can tell it's very massive, but then you hold up your sword and it says, just go straight. And you go, OK, well, well, I guess I'm just going to go straight then. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And um, and, you know, you run through this sort of it's it's you know, you have these two hills that are um, on either side of each other and they sort of form a road to go down and then you get to this 
a strange sort of mountainous area and you hear these little musical tones and they're like "Ooh, this is kind of mysterious mm. um then then you go through the tutorial and then you finally get to the top and you see valis come in from the right and then sort of uh continue on with these birds uh flying above his head and, and you know i think those birds if i recall are actually part of his character model um they're not like independent in themselves you know they have like kind of they're pre-animated as part of Alice's model, I believe. Yeah, that's um, right. That's right. Yeah. So I mean, you know, just super impressive. And you know, you don't you don't see his his um you don't see Valis's face really um you know uh unless you walk in front of him or maybe you know you might not even see it until you actually get onto his head. Um because you know he he um you're you're behind him when you're when you start out running at him, which I think is the Japanese cover for the game. Mm. is uh valis from behind um which was changed to valis from the front uh for the u.s version and now the remake has guys from behind so kind of similar there there you go absolutely yeah okay cool um so for myself um so with like addressing the first uh, part of this kind of breakdown that we're going to do um so how i discovered it's so the way i discovered it, obviously now for me i'll sort of um add to both of your points actually um uh about you know yourself uh, now speaking of like like just that that feeling of like setting out on the adventure off off towards you know that with where, where the light is shining and 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 Logan um sort of the point you raised for me um I, again I'll just I'll talk about um never ending story here again because I have to uh like you know for those who grew up on that um film because it was more for the film for me than the book any time maybe Naz if you've um, you you ride horses presumably Naz. Uh, maybe uh, i did for 12 years so okay yes yes uh, yeah. yeah so for me when i think of like galloping horses i hear um i'll probably you know that i'll probably be playing some of that music here so there's a certain piece of music that plays um uh with never ending story that it's just the big it's like like uh it's like um bastion overhead on falcor and it's like uh a tray like um you know, like full gallop across. It's like the the adventure has started, and um, and though there's like it's very eerie. Uh, it's very it's not eerie. I would say it's it's just muted. You know, Forbidden Lands is like this place is forbidden. So the the score, um, and this is, serves the story uh, absolutely. It, it, it's meant to give off a feeling of of uh, of trepidation of like I'm treading on uh, somewhere I, I shouldn't be even though it's so idyllic and beautiful and there's an inherent commentary there about how what we what we love so much what we are drawn to um so powerlessly we're powerless against it is some is often what what we shouldn't be drawn to and what we shouldn't mess with which is nature and such and so there's this that's the eternal relationship between man and nature described i suppose in a nutshell form is that out of out of love for it we approach we encroach uh but we're destroying it <laughs> which is again you can dive into all sorts of avenues there for speculation but that's definitely an impression i had um for me also like as a uh, you know someone who enjoys I, i'm not a sculptor like you Nas, but um i really appreciate people who can and i appreciate uh like i'm one of those people i don't know logan if you did this i i liked to sort of like uh you know maybe on paper just jot down like imaginary like building like sort of maybe like cubby houses or we call them cubby houses in australia but for you guys like tree houses you know yeah. uh and, and yeah yeah and sort of like architecture and so when i when i see how mono's plinth is set up and there's this just that beautiful sweeping like like it just leads you straight from uh her um uh from like her plinth like down into the valley i just find that to be such a beautiful architectural feature like you know that like it, it, dude they could have just had like a stairway it could have been the most boring yeah. thing you know but they decided to make this this beautiful thing and and uh okay i'm gonna get a bunch of laughter from you guys so <laughs> so i hadn't played for a while uh and um i i, I couldn't i just could not remember where Val also was this is terrible <laughs> okay <laughs> I, I couldn't and so i ran i i ran completely the other way uh, to the, uh yeah to, to yeah yes i knew it you guys thanks thanks a lot for making me feel good i'm kidding all right um so yeah i, I ran to the cairns uh which is the um, not the town that we have here in australia uh the burial <laughs> site um um uh, which is like there's like those you know is uh, i think that's where you encounter gaius possibly it's it's with those sort of raised, like almost like Hobbit hole kind of, uh, it's this sort of brace of four kind of like um, catacombs that you can dive 
Dive Beneath? Is that uh, where you encounter? Um, no, that's um, that's number four, Phaedra. 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 Yeah, so I just went there. Yeah. I just hung out, and Phaedra's like, no one was there. I just went down. <laughs> I completely forgot. I was like, where's Rallis? And then, and I couldn't figure out the sword. And yeah, cue endless laughter from all the actual people who know how to not be... Uh, <laughs> um, interactively challenge. I don't. There has to be some kind of word for people who are like rusty at games a little bit initially when they start. But I got there eventually. Um, gosh, so yeah, that's that kind of my my sort of opening vignette there. So that's how I eventually discovered uh, Valus there. So let's hand. Let's um go to our second heading here. So the way you were impressed by a location. So uh, I I probably combine my two answers in mine. I'll have a, a riff for when it comes back to me. But uh, Naz, in terms of where you fight Valus, like the environment and everything, how do you think it it serves um uh, to sort of enhance the uh, the experience of, of of facing this first colossus? To be honest, I you know it's been so long since I played. You do you sort of you climb up in the tutorial mode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, is it sort of it's is it in like a valley sort of thing? Yeah, yeah. It's basically it's very barren. It's it's very when you yeah. say Logan, it's very nondescript. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's not much to it, especially compared to some of the later locations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I it's, think that's probably to help um, highlight his impressiveness yep. rather than yeah. focusing on the location. It's all about him. Yeah, it's just yeah. It strip literally strips everything else away, and it it lays bare the sort of dire kind of dour. Um, mission mission you have it's just uh here they are and and there's nothing but them looming ahead of you and it's um it also reflects uh the lifelessness which logan talked a bit about this in, in rick's in in, um, in nick's episode how uh we uh you've obviously played the whole game um now i'm not going to spoil anything for you Oh yeah, I've played a few. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, so, so yeah, so come by on. yeah, come on, come on. I'll just I'll cut to a few Seinfeld clips. Like, come on, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, so, but yeah, I wanted to build on what um, on, on what uh, Logan mentioned in one of those earlier episodes about how by the end, in this weird kind of beautifully kind of like layered way, it's it's sad. You know, there's like. What happens to happen? What happens happens to Wanda. You know, his heart darkening, his being darkening, and all that. But nature kind of rebalances in a weird way. Do you know how like life comes back to the mm -hmm. lands? Um, so I figured that that would, it would suit perfectly for the very first experience you have to be like the most barren symbolically. Like it's like, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's sort of setting the tone for oh here's here's the beginning of the arc and um, and and I think in a way also keeping in mind that you know this was marketed very differently to eco um it was uh in a way like i think um, logan you touched on this that it was almost like cool sounding like you know you gave this in your sort of description of how you first encountered the shadow it's like shadow of the colossus it sounds way more like epic and like almost gamey i suppose if you think about it and engaging and like ooh, exciting and then like taking down colossi so um I think they wanted to keep that first encounter, yeah, as as Naz was saying, like as simple as stripped down as possible. You know? Uh that's kind of my little riff on that. So do 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 where are we at? Where's my headings? Oh my phone likes to lock itself. Isn't that great? So that's I did dove into sort of my thing of a location based building off of Naz's, but uh, yourself, Logan, what were your thoughts on the, the themes and, and how well, the location um, served? Yeah, go. Yeah, you're you're definitely right about I think the barrenness of the location sort of serving its purpose in that respect. Um, I feel like Nick might offer a few words about that. Mm -hmm. Um, in the book, yeah, it's you know it's hard, to, yeah, it's hard to like scroll through this whole yeah this book, but um, yeah, obviously, um, you know the 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 main feature of the area where you fight uh, Valis is actually this sort of building built into the wall uh, behind him, which is something that you might not even notice too much the first time mm -hmm. you're fighting him because you're so focused on him, um. But it's this really cool. It's it's almost it would it would really be like a tall tower if it wasn't built into the wall itself. And um, yeah. it's sort of this several. It has several floors in it, and um, you know it looks like something that you could possibly go inside. But you know it's been kind of smashed up and and ruined. Um, and you can't go inside the building. Um, and that you know that that was like maybe always the most interesting building. And every, the most interesting ruin to me in the game, you know, mm. that and number 16 obviously has like an entire city surrounding it. Mm. But um, aside from, you know, th that was always interesting because it's like, that's such a hard to get to place. It's like, why did someone build this there? Like, I, I almost kind of got the impression, this is just completely me, okay. that like maybe 
that building was like built by a different group of people than than that built everything else in the in the forbidden lands mm -hmm. but um maybe that's the impression that they want to to give you know maybe i mean maybe number 16's ruins were were built by different people than number 15's ruins we don't really know mm -hmm. um uh yeah. and yeah i i just remember really liking that building because that was like um you know <laughs> to the extent to which you could compare my the way i play the game to the way nomad plays the game that was the extent of my secret seeking was just trying to get up onto that building uh -huh. and you can get up you can get a, a couple levels up in there um mm. and of course they put a couple gold coins there of course remake uh for the people who are going to do that um, so yeah that's that's the memorable part to me um okay. other than that you know it's it's just a just an arena for you to for you to uh be in awe of Valis. Ah, oh, yeah, I agree. That's awesome, man, for sure. Um, and I figured I'd mention um uh Nas is that when he referred to, I think you probably know who Nomad is, right, Nas? Is uh, Nomad the name of the guy or? Uh, no, no. Oh, so Wonder is the name of the protagonist, but Nomad, he's a, yeah. again a fellow Australian. Uh, Logan, take it away. Go for it. Yeah. Um. No. Nomad is just a a, a secret seeker. Uh, foreshadow the classic he's a youtuber he's been around for a long long time sort of um going you know i can only imagine that the hours that he has um uh no not necessarily playing shadow of the classic legitimately but kind of hacking it and and going into it and um going places he shouldn't be going uh probably, you know <laughs> hundreds yeah. and hundreds of, of hours um spent on this yeah um, and he's sort of you know famous in the fan community for being like that um you know, I mean, people have written articles about this guy, like on Kotaku, like big websites um, have, right. have been written about the sort of secret seekers of Shadow of Classes, and he's like the foremost among those. Uh, I call him the preeminent digital archaeologist of the medium, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and yeah, go ahead, Logan. Well, yeah, unfortunately, you know, the, the truth is that there was one hidden thing uh, in Shadow of Classes, which was this uh, half developed uh, dam area. Mm -hmm. nothing in it really you know it's not you can't interact with it but it's there and someone else found that and then nomad um you know he's he's just gone around showing various different little interesting observations things you know he puts some you know he's he he's like he let's put valis over by the the shrine of worship for funsies <laughs> you know, he'll, do that. he'll um he'll like tell you oh here's where the uh here's where they keep the the model of uh Dorman um you know before you see him in this cut scene you know oh, we'll zoom out and we'll show how they have this little model of Dorman waiting over here so he yeah, he does a lot of stuff like that and um but i think he recently got a hold of a previously unseen um early uh version of the game which is kind of cool that features mm. some different um changes like uh instead of dropping the sword into the pool at the end cut scene uh, in this early version of the game that Nomad found, uh, Iman actually like takes a horn out from oh. his like his coat or his hood and drops that into the pool instead, which is, I don't know where he got, I still don't know if, if anyone knows where he got that version of the game, but I think that other dude I mentioned, Riku, has also gotten his hands on it, so maybe it's just going around. Wow. But that's um, probably, yeah, there's a lot to talk about with Nomad. He's, he's, a, he's gone very in-depth on everything. We'll definitely get him on the show to sort of expand on, on his discoveries for sure. And um, yeah, just sort of quiz him of this. I'm sure there's a lot that uh, um, he's probably probably been on other podcasts before, but we'll see how we go. And um, yeah, it'll be a pleasure to have him on for that one for sure. Awesome. So I'll jump back into our awesome headings. Um, so impressed by our location, I think we've had we've done all of that one ourselves, haven't we? I sort of uh, piggybacked off of um, uh, off of Nas's one, so <laughs> I'm good to kind of continue on. So the way the boss battle characterized your experience, sweet. So I will throw that to Nas. So I suppose another way of phrasing that is um. It, obviously like the whole game is composed of boss battles um and uh if really? you if oh yeah really ooh. <laughs> really <laughs> um but no yeah um uh, and and basically to to have each one of them stand out is a feat unto itself right um so i figured i'd sort of like kind of maybe rephrase it a bit in, in the way that like how did it stand out for you among all the all the different battle boss battles as well so go for it I guess it's, you know, being the first battle, it's kind of like um, setting the tone for the rest of the game. Yeah. Um, you haven't you haven't killed any other colossi yet. Mm. Uh, and I remember when I first when I first uh, played it, 
I remember, as a lot of people have said, um, the sort of emotional battle you go through having to kill this creature that is sort of just minding their own business. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I really remember because he was the first one you had to kill um, just going through that um, that feeling, whereas in most other games you don't have a problem with uh, killing, you know, the bosses. Yeah. Um, it's more of an emotional thing, I yeah. guess. Um, you just yeah, feel was, bad. Yeah, you do feel bad and it's kind of like, oh, do I really have to kill this guy or, you know, is, is he a, a creature, is he... A structure is he you know um to what level is he uh, a being sort of thing can yeah. they feel pain you know uh and just going through all those thoughts um when yeah. you're very first yeah. killing the colossus Hello everyone listening, this is Albert here, just jumping in to make sure that we don't forget to include our very first Colossus story for Valus from the amazing Animal Clan 101 on Instagram, and they have sent me a beautiful story which I wanted to read to you, because we want to read at least one uh, listener story or just a person who has enjoyed or engaged with um, Fumito Ueda's games in 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 a way that sort of goes beyond just the sort of gameplay um, respect that it actually touched them and that it sort of, yeah, just sort of basically shaped and created a memory sort of thing. So if you allowed me to read. And then after this, we'll jump straight back into the episode. Okay, so she writes. So when I first started playing the game, I had watched a playthrough, so I knew exactly how to defeat all the Colossi, all their names, etc. I know I'm a nerd for this game, lol. But as... (laughs) But as I was climbing the platforms to get up to his arena, I had already begun to get a bit annoyed with the climbing controls, so take into account that I was playing the PS3 version. When I finally triggered the battle, I tried to get a cool shot for my first time playing this beautiful game. My plan was to shoot Valus with an arrow and get him to look at me before pursuing me, but then the moment I started running towards him, I got anxiety. I got some anxiety. I tend to be uncomfortable with being beside things that are a lot larger than me, and I hadn't played a video game in months, so my body wasn't completely sure whether um, what was real or not. My heart started pounding as if Valus was right there in front of me. The controls weren't even helping much either. At least until Kuromori, Basaran, Dirge, or Solozi- and Solozia. But I still love this game, and I hold nothing against it. Thanks for taking the time to read my experience. No troubles at all. Uh, Animal Clan. That's very much uh, parallels. Um, you'll hear actually in the main, in the sort of main body of the episode, both uh, Naz and uh, Logan speak about their first experience, and uh, it was very much along the same lines. Like, what do you do? Uh, do you uh, r- run right up to it? Do you? And I can see absolutely the um, the idea of wanting to kind of fire the fire the arrow to sort of draw it near. But for me personally, as soon as I entered its arena, it just immediately just turned its massive head towards me, and it just yeah goosebumps all over my body <laughs> when I saw that, and just now when I sort of mentioned that so thank you so much Animal Clan 101 um, for sharing that and we would love to have you write in again um, for any other uh, stories that you may have for either Fumito Ueda or any of the games that we cover um, in the Interactive Artistry Network. So I would like to read another story. Um, This one is a little bit belated because um, of you know scheduling and such but we received it a couple of weeks ago and if I may. Hi guys you replied to my comment on your podcast asking for memories of the series, so here I am. As a child, I never played new games too often. I was one of those kids that played demo discs to death. So was I, by the way. That's just me editorializing. Some of my favorite gaming memories are of games of which I've never actually played in full, but had just played the 30-minute time demo of, of it over and over again. I can think of several coming... I can think of several coming back to me as I write this, and even though it was just a trailer, Eco was one of those games that stuck with me. There was something about that trailer that I can't describe even now, after being both a writer and an artist in the games industry for several years. Anyone who has played and understood any of the three Ueda games knows exactly what I mean. I and a group of friends played Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, Excuse me. I and a group of friends played Shadow of the Colossus in our teens. For a few months, it was all we talked about. 
new ways to climb the colossi, theories of where there could be a hidden colossi, what the purpose of that beautiful garden atop the temple was. It was a mysterious game that got us asking questions that no other game ever had before or likely ever will again. We just roamed the world every night after school, taking it all in and looking for anything to talk about the next day. Of course, we never really found anything, but I think we knew all along that we never would. That wasn't the point of it all. I eventually learned of a HD remaster of both Eco and Shadow of the Colossus coming to the, to the PS3. I think it was then that I realized that they were actually developed by the same studio. I couldn't wait to play the game I'd seen in the trailer so many years ago, and it did not disappoint. I fell in love with Yorda. I didn't want to leave her side. I got angry when a shadow creature tried to take her away from me, but I can't really explain why. She never even spoke. I think it was something in a way... Uh, I think it was something in the way I played as the boy. He wanted to help her, to protect her, and free her from her prison, and, and I was him. I can't believe I've said this much and not even mentioned The Last Guardian yet. It's difficult to say this because I love the others so much, but I think it's my favorite game of the series. Buddy, you and me both, I've, uh, I've mentioned it on earlier episodes and even on other shows how much I that, that is my favorite game of all time. I think this game was heavily misunderstood by a lot of people and I feel bad for those that are unable to see this game as it was intended to be seen. No, Trico does not do exactly what you say as soon as you say it, but seriously guys, have you never had a pet? <laughs> the bond between the boy and Trico was unlike anything I've seen before, and I'm not just talking about games here. To start with, I was scared of Trico. I was very cautious pulling out those spears and feeding him. I was confused when I needed him to do something so that we could progress, but instead he would start scratching behind his ears. I really felt that I was trying to communicate in a completely different language, and that he was doing the same with me. It wasn't frustrating, but was an immersive experience that required the patience of Shadow of the Colossus's world and care for Eko's Yorda. A fine example of how you bond with Trico grows uh, uh, can be seen in a single moment in the game. I had, pre I had briefly left Trico behind to look for a way to destroy a few stained glass panels blo blocking the way forward when I entered a large room with a balcony at one side from which I could see Trico. I soon realized there were stone men coming at me, and before I could get away, they grabbed me. Then I remembered that Trico would not be able to help me due to his fear of said glass. The game had previously taught me that there was no way Trico would get past these unless I could destroy them. I thought I was done for and sat back in my seat in disappointment, but then something magical happened. Trico made the jump. He came crashing through the glass and to my rescue. I quickly grabbed my controller and once again joined the fight. I don't know how he does it, but Ueda can pull on emotions I never knew, I never even knew I had. He proves that games can be art, there's no doubt about it. I apologize for rambling so much, which you're totally not, uh, but there's just so much to say about the series as impactful as this, about a series as impactful as this. Can I ask that you please keep me anonymous if you do decide to read out any of this? Also, I won't be offended if you don't read any of it, I enjoyed writing it. It brought back fond memories. I can't wait for your next podcast and of course the next gen design masterpiece. Keep up the great work. P.S. I cannot wait for Death Stranding. I've been following everything as a lifelong Kojima fan. Well, not to worry, my friend. Um, I will be um, editing out any mentions of your name, which at the beginning, because I started just reading the letter, I did say your name, but I'll be editing it out, all, all instances of it, not to worry. And I also wanted to say I'm more than happy to uh, hear anything you'd like to share with us uh, about Death Stranding on that show, because um, that's wonderful to hear as well. So thank you both um, to Animal Clan 101 and to um, our anonymous uh, writer for their wonderful stories about Fumito Ueda's games and just as a reminder to our listeners um, to yourself listening now if you do have an experience even if it isn't strictly about the Colossus of the week um, we would love to hear from you uh, and then in our sort of messages together um, obviously if you contact me sort of I'll be replying to you and such you can let me know if you'd like your story read either with your including your name as you know our anonymous writer has sort of um, specified for me or uh, and another thing you can let me know is if um, you'd like it to be read on that particular week's show or maybe to be kept for the um, show where a certain element of the story will be discussed. So 
too easy. Well, have a lovely rest of your day and listening to the rest of the episode. And um, let's just let's let's jump back in. His yeah. um his appearance, the whole of energy of all the colossi actually really like it, it engenders pathos. Like you, um yeah, it's it, you can't help but especially and this is again testament to the designers as well and like this sort of strange uh, masonry slash architectural kind of way that their facial features are, are composed. But they're they're in a sense emotionless. Like they're meant to be sent yeah. simply just like as nature is. You know, it's just this neutral expression. But just like how you know, it's inevitable that we do because we're emotional creatures. Is we we ascribe emotion to uh, even things that that don't have any strict um, or definite facial expression, and all of them have this this vacant intelligence to them, a dim a dim intelligence. I think Nick says in the book. But you're right. Nevertheless, we still feel like guilty from the very beginning. Um, what did you what did you think of that, uh, Logan? I uh, Logan has hey, left um, us. I'm yeah, kidding. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, he was processing. Then, um... He was having a moment of silence for the Colossi. Yeah. Hold on. I'll... So I did zone out for it's getting late. Can you can you just repeat that a little bit? That's you okay. Cut this out when no, actually... I'm gonna keep it on. It's neat. To, we listeners need to know how much you put like the dedication really? put into this. Yeah. Year. yeah. That's not dedication. That's I. <laughs> it's a sign of your it's dedication. The it's the <laughs> no. Of dedication. How I question I ask this. How is your body naturally wanting to go to sleep? Which I'm gonna ask you if you you gotta do. Like me and Nas can take it from here. Like for us, it's only eight no, p.m. I'm, I'm still I'm still good for now. I'll, I'll let y'all know if, oh, if I you're get back a little mini hand, mini hand for Logan. I really don't. Right. I really, I really don't. Um, don't take it for granted, man, for sure. Um, so yeah, the question was. Um, so how is the boss battle like characterized for you? And um, I think I sort of threw it after sort of Naz gave her riff about sort of the pathos, yeah. like feeling bad for the for the creature. I sort of decided to throw it to you about to see if you had any, had any thoughts on what the the designers were able to accomplish with all of these creatures basically having these vacant expressions, and yet we we ascribe just like guilt to to doing what we do in a sense, even though we're being heroic in a way. But go for it. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, like I said, um, Val's kind of cute. You know, it makes sense that he was the mascot for the game. He's kind of got this big sort of nose thing going yeah, on. It's adorable. Um, I know Nick says in the book that apparently Valis uh, took them the longest to design, um, which wow. makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do think he is the worthiest mascot of the game. Obviously, the community, and um, I would consider Blue Point to be a part of that community, is there yeah. really fans. Mm. Um, the community has decided that Gaius is, is the new mascot now. Mm. Um, and that is what it is. Um, Gaius is, you know, also obviously kind of cute in his own way. But really, I think Valis uh, is more similar in to how a lot of the other Colossi are designed. Yeah. Um, so I think he works better in that respect. Um, mm. And of course, he's the first one, so that's significant. That is significant, um, yeah. 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 As for the the emotions that I felt when I was actually um, fighting him, um, that was never really, you know, especially like almost throughout my entire first incomplete playthrough of the game on the PS2, um, I wasn't really feeling like the whole um, dark, uh, you know, you shouldn't be doing this. These creatures didn't do anything. I wasn't feeling that aspect of it. Okay, um, not, not that, not which, that early. You know, I, That's okay. Yeah, which which I you know, and I do kind of wonder if maybe that fact has of, of having been able to play through a lot of the game without feeling that has somewhat contributed to how much more sympathetic towards Wander I tend to be. Um, it than, just means you, you have know, no empathy. Other... Yeah, and I, 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 I <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, dude. Yeah, but... I I do really want to have Sam on because I know in his video on Shadow of the Classes he goes really heavy on that whole like you know Wander is kind of a bad guy aspect and and you know i'm really interested to talk to him and talk about that but um yeah so yeah and I, I was joking Nalus, before by the way you definitely have everything um, it's all good no of course i know <laughs> um but no you know certainly once i did realize that darsk aspect um i remember valis kind of was the one i fought back to and went oh you know he's he's he, he seemed like a nice guy you know i feel kind of yeah. bad about that yeah um yeah and that he's was supposed to know, hang I, out i don't remember there was definitely like a very specific moment where like that aspect of the game kind of dawned on me. Like, I don't remember exactly when that was, mm. um, if it was before I played on the PS3. Um, but there was definitely this, this point where I was like, 
but that probably hurts being a Colossi and having this guy stab you in, in your weak point and, and take your life force out. That's yeah. probably not very fun. Not, not a fun um, time. Not a good Wednesday. Yeah, I just have this memory of like maybe like a like a 14 year old me like frowning thinking of like Vallis getting hurt um, yeah. and being like, well, now and now I see what people are talking about with this whole double uh, double layered story kind of thing that they say. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that's basically how it was for me. Um, that's cool. But yeah, I mean, Vallis is, is um, like I said, he, he really should be the mascot for the game, in my opinion. Definitely. Yeah, and I think it and, and it makes sense that they took the longest um to uh, to design it for sure. There you go. So I think we've 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 all of us had our riff on sort of how the battle was characterized, correct? I think so. Yeah. yeah. We've got a fair amount of discussion out of that, so Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> hey, it ended up again this beautiful um again, uh, that was sort of my my thinking was to have headings and be like, Oh, talk about the formal qualities, talk about the symbolic qualities, all that. But this is an ends up ended up being really, really beautiful. So big big ups to user yeah. TG Mana Smana. Uh <laughs> awesome. And yeah, get in touch. We'll we'll, we'll probably have you on Ex- on the show at one exec- point. Exec executive producer of the yes. Kimito Way to Park. <laughs> That's right. Yes, exactly. So you have been uh and this person is probably just like <laughs> who, who knows if they'll even listen but we'll see uh if you if you do, if you do listen um, i will be obviously um sending just because it's i just want to do right by by this person and just send them like uh the episode link and with like timestamp and everything just to let them know um because yeah it's just really beautifully phrased so the last thing we have here is any specific characteristic of the colossi um so i i interpret this as minutia so i have minutia for just like life i just there are certain things and i want to actually probably get one from each of you i just i'm a sort of a minutia collector um and if you don't know what minutia is it's just the little tiny little things little flourishes um something you can maybe if you have the concept of wabi-sabi it's the thing that makes the thing either imperfect or intriguing uh or just um that you connect with so for me my main minutia in life is um uh like seeing a light uh, at night uh when it's raining uh and it's uh basically like a lamp light illuminating a tree um at, uh, but it has to be those like four or five conditions and it's just like it weirdly makes this kind of beautiful kind of shelter type thing so it's like if you saw amelie like she has the whole thing is dedicated to like the she's like people like like popping bubble bubble wrap and stuff and, and like putting their hands in like rice or whatever there's these little things in life Wait, this you know? is this is like someone on the internet that you're talking about? Um, so yeah, Amelie, no, Amelie's the film. It's, um, Naz, you remember that film? Amelie? Oh, Amelie, the movie. Right? Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, saw, I, I thought you said something else. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. So, um, so that's, that's my thing. So for me, my minutia that I took away from Valus was this, it's very, very, just, it's like, a. am just thinking of it now. It's like when you kill him, um, he's gripping his like I'm again reminded of never ending story there's that uh, very emotional scene where the rock biter is talking about how he let the th- he let his friends slip from his hands and he's like but my hands are so strong you know um, I thought I'd be able to hold on to them but the nothing took them away from me and he's like they look like strong hands don't they and it's like super heartbreaking um, because he's literally like a guy made of rock and stuff and so when I saw Valus who is like the, like he, that's his club that's his he, again he has this again kind of cutish kind of aspect kind of reminds me of like a kid walking around like um, like a sand pit <laughs> a sand pit with like his like a little shovel like he's just there he's just chilling and then when you see the minutia that like really got to me was when he, you see his his club just fall out of his hand as he's just falling yeah. and i was like oh shit like i've yeah i've killed this <laughs> this creature so that was my that was my little takeaway there so i'll, I'll it was yeah. it was always memorable to me how um when he falls his body falls and then his hand like foops down after yeah. um that was always very memorable to me and you hear you see the ground around it kind of crack up yeah um, with that Absolutely. Oh, yeah, the ground cracking again. Another great miniature there for sure. Um, so yeah, and Nas, what what was anything like a particular characteristic of the Colossi, either in the encounter or the design? I honestly think you guys have it covered. I mean, um, just with his, his visual design, as you said, he's kind of innocent looking. He's sort of yeah. sort of almost as a childlike or kind of like an ape or or something like that. Um, yeah. That sort of yeah. look in his design. So I think yeah. But yeah, I think you guys have that covered. I think for maximum. Yeah, yeah. Can we um? Oh yeah, go ahead, Logan. Sorry. 
I was wondering, you know, I think um, something that might be cool is, is to maybe start these off, and we didn't get to do it at this point, yep. with some of the, the facts, you know, about Valis. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you were planning on... on yeah, yeah, I've, got, this, the wiki, but, you know, I've like, got the wiki open here. Yeah, that's, that's Okay, good. yeah, then definitely, you know, go down to that trivia section, read, read oh, on yeah. the box. You are, um, okay, clairvoyance continues. Yeah. I literally have the trivia <laughs> section. It's like you're here in, like, weird ghost form, dude. Seriously, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, so, like minds for sure. Um, so, you've got the trivia obviously from teamico.wikio.com. Why not? Let's get this for posterity on, uh, you know, whatever these, like in the future, these things will be recorded onto. In Death Clock, they record onto water. So, maybe these will just be yeah. instead yeah. of MP3s. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'll take the first one. So, Valis is the only Colossus that is shown to have any form of wildlife near it, as there are several hawks continuously circling around its head. So, you take the next one, man. Yeah, uh, well, you know, I think we, we, we all know this, that he's um, one of the only three that wields a weapon, mm -hmm. uh, with, of course, Gaius, number three, and Argus, uh, number 15, uh, the mean man himself. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, um, and you know, Valus' uh, weapon is obviously not even sword like it's a hammer, which is, you know, the only weapon like that that any of them uh, wield. Mm. That's right. Um, Valus also stands at roughly 70 feet or 21 meters tall, making it the fourth shortest of all the Colossi. It shares um, physical similarities with um, with, Ar uh, with both um, Barba and Argus. Yeah, they mean, yeah, yeah, they mean to say Barba, yeah. 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 The Minotaur bros. That's right. Yeah, the, the three. <laughs> Naz, can you see all three of these guys just in like a Cadillac on the way to Vegas, like the, the three Minotaur bros? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean that's that's what the, what the next uh, bit of trivia actually says is that you know Valus was called Minotaur A, uh, I believe, uh, in Dev, mm. um, and Barba was Minotaur B, and uh, Argus was Minotaur C. That's it. That's cool. So after that, we have Valus is the most centrally located out of all the Colossi. It sounds like a tour guide. Well, we have the most centrally located Colossi no, for you. Um, if you'd like to stop by the, the, the uh, what is it, the, the souvenir shop? Anyway, with the absolute center of the Forbidden Lands map being located in the northwestern corner of the Autumn Forest intersection, and then it goes into a couple of different like sections, as in like yeah, E5, really E4. like yeah, <laughs> very in depth. <laughs> that, here, that, that's a, that's a wiki for you. Yeah, here is the precise geographical location according to the longitude and latitude of where you may find yeah. this colossus. Yeah, it sounded like Jack Black. Uh, you take the next one, buddy. Uh, the, the, the Valis and Gaius uh, are the only Colossi with major sigils on their arms, but those are both only in hard mode. Mm, that's right. Uh, Argus and Malus come close, but they have minor sigils on their arms, not major ones. So stabbing Valus in the back of its leg twice will trigger the cutscene where it falls over, and the music switches to the opened way, which is super dramatic and beautiful. Um, if the player only stabs Valus in the leg once and it is quick enough, they can climb up Valus and slay it with um, the uh, music track Grotesque Figures still playing. So yeah, that yeah. um that surprised me in the remake. I, I didn't remember that from the original. Um, that um. If you stab him once, he does go down on the one knee. Mm. Um, but um, it's not fancy if you if you stab him twice, or it might be if you if you give him like a big stab too. Yeah. Um, then like you'll actually get like a different angle where he falls down, and then the music changes. That was that surprised me. Yeah, crazy. Hmm. Um, yeah. Okay, so we'll just check to see if who knows. Naz might be following along. Are you on the wiki by any chance for Valus? If you do a quick no, Google. I'll let you guys. <laughs> All right. The, um... A happy listener. Yay. I, oh, by the way, Naz, are you having fun? Is this, is this, you can? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah? Awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I think it. So our last one is Valus has received, actually, what am I doing? This is your one, Logan. Go. Yeah. I was about well, to steal it. How, I was wondering about this is like, has he? Like, where, who's giving Valus criticism? I know. Uh, supposedly, supposedly due to the platforms on its backside. It's unrealistically convenient for platforms to be built on its back so that it can ultimately be climbed and felled. Um, now, obviously, this is something that I have thought of. I'm so, actually, we should have mentioned, probably mentioned these during the, uh, the discussion. Um, <laughs> that he does have these kind of, I call them tutorial platforms, basically what they are. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it, it really kind of a feature that is sort of, um, you know, even with guys is like, underpants or whatever you want to call them that you can stand on <laughs> um like you know that that seems kind of biological but like valus platforms really don't seem biological mm. um i i wouldn't say that's a complaint i would just say 
that is perhaps an instance of obvious game design, um, which is yeah. maybe not something you usually see in an Oeda game, but uh, it is what it is. Yeah. The thread that I have to pull yeah. to kind of have that a little bit, again, not, again, I don't derive, I'm, I'm not out there to take down anyone's thoughts. And again, people, you know, as long as you're expressing yourself in a civil way, like all thoughts of, and opinions are valid to me. But what I would sort of say to kind of gently pull at the thread of that to unravel that is that um, the very, like, I would be able to let that slide if literally um, these uh, these creatures. Ooh, we have we have. Uh, that's okay. That's all good. Um, yeah, we have. Um, it sounded like a uh, like a it's like a trombone for a second there. That's crazy. Like, well, we are yeah. Naz has to get to her practice in when when she can. Okay, we can't interfere with her band. <laughs> can't interfere with her band practice. I mean, if they're just there waiting, they're just like, come on, Naz, we're trying to get the symphony together. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I figured I'd mention, so yeah, what kind of unravels that for me, that sort of uh, complaint, so, as it were, is that literally, <laughs> in every way, like they're designed to look like buildings like that that criticism wouldn't yeah. hold weight if it was like like a let's just say like a giant cat and the cat had this yeah. like tumorescent protrusion that looked exactly like a platform i'd be like you know what that doesn't fit with the design of a cat i don't know many cats that have platforms grafted to their back you know uh it's not realistic and number one number two what's your basis for realisticness being here uh, do you uh, like have you been to the forbidden lands um shut up sorry <laughs> sorry sorry that's me getting getting a yeah. bit of Take your Riddler. The the uh, the wiki editor does attempt to explain it. Yes. Um. Something about uh, architectural. It makes sense that their design would be somewhat flawed and consequently convenient. I don't know. It, it doesn't really. I don't know. Okay, that's there doesn't cool. need to be. There doesn't need to be a justification for it, really. Yeah. Um. I'll. I'll. My little. The bow that I'll sort of tie off on this as we sort of round out the trivia uh, or the facts rather, um, is that for me again, this was really to really was to serve, and I'll build on Naz's point about this childlike aspect, you know, um, and uh, like the platforms again, as and I'll agree with both of you really, is that platforms and, and having that tutorial aspect, there's a an aspect of like getting started and just like, um, and th that that sort of childlike aspect kind of feeds into that for me that 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 it would um, have this simple design, this simple and very understandable design. Um, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, as we grow, we get like our bodies become more complex, we develop more curves, we develop longer bones and all this stuff. But when we're little, when we're a little more baby like, we have more simpler features. And that's why they say like all babies look the same, you know, uh, in, in one parlance. Some, some babies are, are freaks of nature. No, I'm kidding. All babies are lovely. All babies are lovely. <laughs> oh, no, I'm terrible. Um, Come on, we all have to admit. Even parents would admit that some babies are like straight up ugly. Yeah, just saying. Oh dear. Okay, we've lost all the mothers listening to the show. That's it. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> but yeah. So that's that's kind of how it sort of fits thematically for me. Is that oh, simplicity, getting started, simple to understand, childlike creature. I get it. So I, I sort of understand, and that kind of makes sense to me. Um, yeah, so that's kind of that kind of wraps those facts out. Was there anything else you wanted to kind of cover, um, either from? I mean, I have, I, I kind of have to read this because it's so beautifully written. Uh, just even though we sort of dis discussed him being felled, but I need to have to. Uh, I think I'd, I'd read this from from Nick's book. So as I crest the top of the cliff, next to a thin cluster of trees, rocks, and bushes, from somewhere to my right comes an echoing bellow and a series of earth shaking stomps. Massive hoofed feet fill my vision as they tromp by, attached to legs like mossy oaks, and a huge armoured hand swings low to the ground. The behemoth walks past me, street trees rattling, and a black cloud of dust kicking up in its wake, my controller rumbling with each mon monstrous step. So if you get rid of the um, my controller rumbling with each monstrous step, you just extract that. That's a piece of poetry right there. You know, yeah. as I crest atop the cliff next to a thin cluster of trees. It sounds like W. B. Yeats, damn it. it sounds like freaking poetry. With, burning with sunlight. Yeah. Damn. So there you go. Um so that's kind of my wrap up. We're coming up to the two hours, guys, so I'm happy to start tailing really? off. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> when you're having fun, hey? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I dig it. So uh, you know what, Naz, we need to probably get you back on another episode, hey. Yeah, yeah. I, I I would really like to just talk to you about about you and your work. Yeah, um, that's that's definitely what I'm know, thinking. And, and just yeah, have like the Nas interview. I think would be very cool. Would love that. Yeah, but it's obviously all depends on what we're able to do um, with this one here. Would you like to? Um, 
Logan, were you sort of referencing having that sort of now, if you had the time, if you wanted to join us uh, for that one, Logan, or <laughs> would you like to jump on the next one, um, Anas? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever works for you guys. Whatever works for you guys. Okay, so it, in that case, I'm, I'm happy to continue. However, I do I want to throw it to Logan to see if you're able to, again, I just... Well, um, yeah. I, I guess, I mean, it just depends how long. I, I, I'm definitely getting pretty yeah. knackered, you might say. That's um, all you're about. Welcome to go to bed, and we can keep going. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, right. I mean, yeah. Then I, I will look forward to hearing um, you talk about your craft. If, that, if that's what you want to do. Fantastic. Uh, we'll see how things I'm wrap up. Glad, yeah, I'm glad we got so much uh, yeah, out of Alice. Absolutely. Um, sorry if I was a little, uh, if I sound a little critical this episode. Or no, I loved it. Things out. Um, yeah. Also, a little um, <laughs> in, in unintentional uh, uh, nomenclature trivia there. So the way that you pronounced "out of Alice." It sounded like like one of its nicknames could be Alice because it's like Valis. Uh, you like that? <laughs> Valis in Wonderland. I want to see that spin off. Oh that's a, boy, that's that a very a fun fan art. That's yeah. you, you had a lot of Valis criticism today. Valid, get it? Valid, get it? <laughs> yeah, hey, I I, uh, I right. need to well, I need I'll, to retire. I'll, I'll leave on that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm kidding, Logan. <laughs> it's been. I'm glad I could- yeah, I'm glad I can make it. Uh, nice yeah, talking dude. to you, Naz. And uh, I guess, Albert, I will see you next week. I'll see you next week. It's always a pleasure, Logan. Right. You're the greatest. Thanks, buddy. All right. Thank you. Bye. Take it easy. Bye. Naz, it has been an hour and a bit. Um, I actually yeah. wanted to, because it's, you know what, now that he's, he's, I think he may still be on the air or anything, but I did get the impression that he wanted to actually have a few questions with yourself there about your work. Um, I just need to explore this now because it is all about your availability and, and, and whatever's most convenient to you. Would you be happy jumping in with us next week to sort of dive fully deep, uh, like full on into like a proper interview or um, how does that work yeah, for you? That sounds pretty cool. Um, yeah. What day? Because I know this isn't your normal recording. That's day. right. We, we actually go on the weekends usually. So on uh, uh, we yeah. actually do Saturdays. So that would be um, around about 10 a.m. And that's when um, it sort of suits. Uh, so 10 a.m. on Saturdays. Is that out of the question for you? Um, it really just depends on what I'm doing. So that wouldn't be this Saturday to be the Saturday Oh, of after. course, the, the, the one after. Yeah. 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 Again, we take um, our time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what I'll probably get you to do, um, whether you want to add me on Facebook or something, sure. or you can just message me through Instagram or whatever. Yeah, whatever we'll get the Facebook happening. Good. Yeah, Instagram can be – it's okay. great, but, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll send that one through on the Facebook. Yeah, it's, it's a bit hard because you don't really get notifications through I Instagram. So I forget about it sometimes. So. I do. I do. Um, okay. But what, what we might do um, if you want to get me on next time mm-hmm. is um, shoot me a message um, – after this weekend, we'll do uh, sort of during the week, and mm-hmm. I'll just um, double check what I'm doing on the weekend because I'm not quite sure that yeah. far in advance um, what easy. I'm doing. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. and we don't definitely don't want to cut into um, weekend plans and such. So again, um, and if you have any of them that do pop up totally let us know it's totally fine because again as logan and i you you heard it happening like live on the air so to speak is that like once we sort of vibe with someone it's like hey like literally doors open like this is your home yeah, yeah. so feel free to, to join oh. at any time yeah and i think um yeah it might be better if we sort of break it up yeah. rather than try and squish everything in at yeah. the end sort of so, that's yeah. right and it didn't that didn't have to happen like we could have had crazy personality clashes you could have been some frou-frou yeah. totally pretentious like scarf scarf flopping artist who was like oh i can't believe her. but you're actually <laughs> super grounded and really kindred and awesome so and i'm it was a great pleasure having um meeting you today and and looking forward to continuing our chats yeah awesome no i've been on um been on some other podcasts before and, and you see some people will listen to some other guests that they have on and, and are quite difficult and um yeah. some of them you know, they might just um you'll ask them a question and they'll they'll say one word in response and that's it and you know they're very blunt oh um, goodness tell me about and, it you know, I quite like to ramble. So. Yay, a fellow, okay, uh, um, awkward over the Skype rambler high five because we're both ramblers. Yeah. Boom, there you go. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, I'll tail off into the end of the show because we'd like to have you uh, all the way through yeah. to the end of the show. So to close the episode off, listeners, Fumito Ueda podcast is part of the Interactive Artistry Podcast Network. You can find us on basically all the outlets as just Fumito Ueda podcast or Fumito Ueda. Um, so Instagram, Facebook, it's all as soon as you type those three words you'll find us pretty easily and um where can the listeners find yourself uh nas 
Uh, I'm on pretty much every uh, social media as Nazi Goreng, N-A-Z-E-G-O-R-E-N-G. Uh, so I'm on Twitter, Tumblr, DeviantArt, Instagram, and then uh, Facebook is Nazi Goreng Crafts as one word. So Beautiful. Yeah. Fantastic. If you just type yeah. my name into Google, you'll pretty much find me straight away. Lovely. And is Goreng any reference at all to like the noodles, like the Goreng noodles? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. I feel. I don't know if you remember the um the Telstra advertisement with the Great Wall of China. <laughs> I, I dig that. That's a an inside uh, reference for uh, Australia. like Austra- Australians. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, even <laughs> though, know. even though, what's like I'm I'm actually I'm 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 an imposter because I know Telstra, but I don't know that particular commercial. So I'll have to look it up. Um, but you remember the Not Happy Jan commercial, right? John? John? Where's our ad in the yellow pages directory? Keep calm. Count to ten. One, two, three. Eight, nine, ten. Not happy, John! Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, okay. So I got one. Yeah, I got one in. A little obscure yeah. Australian reference. But there you go. Um, so, yeah, lis- uh, listeners, it was a pleasure having you uh, listen, obviously, everyone listening for us uh, to us today. And then, once again, I had to iterate, uh, reiterate my uh, it was a great pleasure uh, and an honor and a privilege uh, to have you on the show, Naz, and looking forward to having you on for future episodes as well. Awesome. Fantastic. Take it easy, everyone, and have a lovely upcoming week. We'll catch you on the next one. Yay! Yay. Huzzah! <laughs> awesome. Terrific. Awesome. Well, I'll get this one edited up fairly quickly and I'll post you uh, the link. So that's um, super yeah. shareable on, on all of Yeah, just feel free to share that around. And, um, you, um, yeah. Do you want to add me on Facebook now? Or yeah, let's make this happen. Let's do this. Yep. Amazing. Oh, also, yeah. I figured I'd mention because I, I do end, end up editing this. Was there anything throughout the show that you wanted me to edit out or anything like that? Um. Oh, not really. Yeah. So good. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm not an expert like you guys are, so I hope you won't um, <laughs> won't judge me too harshly for um, You're fine. not knowing it as well as you. Yeah. You are, uh, yeah, that's, I'm, oh, you know what? Because we haven't been called experts before, I will, I will bottle that, that I'll just like put that in like a satchel of appreciation and just feel like, oh, <laughs> someone actually called us experts, even though we're very much not. <laughs> <We're>... <laughs> Definitely more of the casual player that just you know just plays the basic game and like no. doesn't go back for all the secret goodies and and hard modes and yeah. stuff like that so. that, that's cool that's cool um i figured i'd mention it here so both of my sisters are pretty uh like like they they love their cosplay right they like they're, oh, they're, they're well into it. Mm-hmm. and so i'll be definitely sharing stuff because and they have their networks too so my girl uh my uh my my girlfriend actually she does um uh like design like um uh, uh, i figured i'd mention this too she sort of does fashion design as well so we're all super into oh. yeah yeah and my, my your um, sister's younger or older uh i have one older one younger and the younger oh. one does plushies as well um not oh, nothing cool. on the level of i just can't get over in your profile you've got the uh now here's my brony here's my brony crit yeah. on the line brony crit is on the line that is not applejack that is not fluttershy yeah. that is oh my god i fail i said i fail i'm not a brony who is that the, the rainbow one who is who is she? rainbow dash rainbow dash see i got half of the name and i get zero point i get zero points that's okay it's funny um my boyfriend's not a brony but he he sort of makes a game of trying to guess their names all the time <laughs> So it's similar. It's like this one has apples on its on its bum. It's Applejack. It's Applejack. Like, <laughs> I'm. I'm. If if we. I mean, you you remember the whole friends thing? It's like, are you a Chandler? Are you a Monica? All that. I'm definitely. Yeah. I'm definitely a Fluttershy myself, personally. Yeah. Just yeah. saying. Okay, I'm on that Facebook though. Actually, you know what? Because I'll be there. Yeah. Actually, if you want to edit, the, I'll edit this out. Um, because again, you don't want people just like, oh, I know you're a Facebook player, so I'll edit this out. But oh, yeah, um, yeah. Like totally yeah. so, but yeah actually you know what this is going to be easier so if you're on facebook just google albert kessa like you'll find sorry i'll um, just put it in in the um in the um uh, in the Facebook now, uh, A L B E R T, um, and then yep. C H E double S A, um, and 
you know what, I'll keep this in because again, listeners, it's fine. Like add me, it's totally cool. Totally G, I'm, I'm good with that. Um, and you should see two profiles. One is um, uh, like me there, Canberra, Australia, all that. And then yeah. you'll see a page, which is just my artist page where I'm all got my like moody face, all that promo stuff that I did for my abstract art, which I still do, but um, we'll touch yeah. on that later on another, on your upcoming second episode of Fumito Ueda podcast. There you go. You have, you have a friend in us and you have a, you have a, you have a podcast home with us. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, salutes to you. Big ups to um. What does your does does um does boyfriend do anything kind of like super like creative and stuff? No, he's um he's pretty much the opposite to me. He okay. um he's a he's a manager at a hardware store. I'm sure as an Australian, you you will know which hardware store I'm talking yes, about. Yes, <laughs> I certainly do. That's fantastic. Cool, cool. Well, big ups to him yeah. for sure. Oh, actually, you know what? I just got that connection because he can hook you up with materials. Yeah, yeah, it's good for um, all that sort of more hard materials when I'm building big things. So that's yeah. it. Similarly, if we're doing <laughs> yeah. Similarily, Ray, because yeah. um, she does yeah this emotional intelligence work. I actually had her on the show a few times. My girlfriend, she, uh, we talk about yeah, just like basically psychologically profiling some of these characters and like as a little tease. So God of War, um, you know, started out as as I'm sure you know, like super violent, super like macho. Mm. Ma- male fantasy power fulfillment crap you know uh which again served its purpose for a while but um so it it really embodies like the maturation of the medium now because we have this story now about him and his son and like how how Mm. he's essentially been uh sort of like pushing the responsibility of stepping up to the role of fatherhood away and and the sort of confusion that can happen that we can all relate to of like thinking our fathers hate us when they may themselves be afraid of like being able to uh get close or articulate themselves so like that's so it's cool to know um that like yeah and that's sort of how she jumped on so like partners helping each other yay yeah yeah i mean he's definitely more skilled in the um sort of management and and taking care of people and conflict and stuff like that so yeah appreciate it well if he ever wants to jump on the show he's more than welcome to Ah, awesome he'd have no idea what we're talking about yes Chime in. <laughs> that would be in, actually super entertaining. I reckon it'd be so good. Yeah, it'd be funny to get sort of a um a playthrough with like a first person like um yeah. first viewing sort of feedback sort of thing. I, I'm serious. We could totally make it happen. Okay, <laughs> Naz, have a fantastic rest of the night. We'll catch up with you um awesome. on the next Saturday. Yep, cool. Just um send me a message through the week, and we'll just make sure that everything's cool. Too easy. Have a really good night. Good night. Okay. Bye. <laughs> bye. Hello, how are we doing? Hey. <laughs> Fantastic. So we have Logan on the line and we have, shall I, shall I just call you Naz? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Fantastic. Oh, it's so cool. Hey, I've got my Logan here. I've got all my awesome co-hosts from, yeah. around, the, from around the world, um, but I do love having an Aussie on the show. So cool. So yeah, real like, quick. you've got one other Aussie with me? Or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I wanted to ask, because um, I, I read when you said this and then I kind of forgot about it until now. Um, this thing where you wanted us to record our own voices. Uh, what was what was the program or whatever that you wanted? That's okay. Um, first that? of all, a little shout out to your complete and kind of spooky clairvoyance because I was literally about to, that was the next thing out of my mouth. So oh, okay, Logan good. is officially, you know how uh, Naz, you know how the uh, America they're ahead of us or whatever. Like he's actually like yeah, pro- yeah. Pro- proper proper clairvoyant. <laughs> oh, actually, <yeah. laughs> I know. <laughs> Too easy. Ah, yes, if that's possible. But then again, you know, it, it's about what um, Naz is able to do as well. So that's kind of what we're, Naz, I figured I'd mention. We're sort of moving towards um, recording our tracks uh, independently. And then you just send me uh, the MP3 just through a Google Drive drop. It's the like, super easiest thing. And then I let low. Uh, yeah. yeah. Are you able to do that? Um, what program do you guys use? Oh, just, that? yeah, that's the last yeah, one exactly. Question. Oh, sorry, sorry. I forgot to mention. Um, so I figured, so if you guys have like your mics all, all hooked up to Skype, it's for me a simple matter of opening up QuickTime and I just select, uh, um, the new recording, um, which is like super. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. 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 So yeah, uh, Naz, are you on a Mac by any chance? I am. Yeah. Fantastic. So you I, you just I, go. Uh, no. Yeah. If you I'm hit, on PC. Oh, that's okay. So I'll quickly walk us through it. Um. So you go command space. Just type quick. It'll come up quick time play. I'm actually doing the exact same thing now. Um. And now. Just I'm, one thing. I've got um my earphones plugged in, but I think that my computer is still um using my computer mic for the Skype call. Do you know how to? Yeah. Make yeah. It- 
force it to use my um, my headphones. Sure, sure. So what you want to do is I'll you just go to the sound menu. This is like um uh, yeah um Apple support podcast now. I love it. That's so good. Um yeah. so what 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 um and so also uh, for Logan um yourself it would just basically just be uh, your PC a media player. Um it should enable you to record an audio like a like a voice memo. Yeah, and I know like the transitional thing is, is a little bit like once once we've got it super streamlined, and I've actually got like a fact sheet I can send all of our guests. But uh, Naz, you've um you're joining us just as we're sort of starting to uh, we've gotten on our feet. We're just um sl like a yeah. ponderous colossus, you could say. We're just getting moving. With, uh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yeah, there was a um yeah there was a uh, I I listened to a little bit of the Pacific Rim podcast, not that much. Oh yeah, uh, and there was a commenter who is not too too happy with all the all the variety on the channel but um. yeah i know i know and exactly we're still experimenting with that one i think um uh yeah and and actually recently i've decided to switch that format up so the first of all the music is gonna uh it's like yeah you actually here's a little shout out to logan because uh we've had very little of any kind of people saying like oh i've changed this change that so uh, so far logan is my lucky charm uh it, this show started pretty nicely um but uh yeah i'll take a few uh i'm gonna take all that feedback on for episode two onwards on pacific rim um naz do you enjoy pacific rim i actually have never watched pacific rim. oh I'm you a should yeah. yeah oh well, there you go then then you must yeah. you must uh, have your first experience with this film it's uh beautiful and if anything I I saw um sorry i saw, saw one of the films it must have been one of the newer ones it was on telly the other day and oh, i yeah? caught the end half of it but i didn't understand what was going on no, that's so fine. i just watched it the visuals were just awesome and i was like this is cool yeah i have no idea what's going on <laughs> all you need to but know it, yeah no no actually i didn't mean to interrupt go ahead no, no, you, you go. That's yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> All you need to know is that um, so I, as a like mini maybe uh, like elevator thing is just uh, so Guillermo del Toro um, directed Pan's Labyrinth, the Hellboy films, and then the recently he swept the Oscars actually recently with The yeah. Shape of Water. Yeah. yeah so. Yeah. Oh yeah, so beautifully. Uh, Logan, did you end up seeing Shape of Water? Yeah, oh, I saw it a while ago. Oh yeah! Oh, look at this guy. He's got that movie pass happening. I mean, yeah, I, I've seen every Best Picture nominee this year. So okay, all right, okay. Wow. Look at this guy. <laughs> Logan is also the master of the humble brag. Uh, is, yeah. is, is is lovely. It's fantastic. Uh, but no, no. But in all seriousness, I am hella envious of you, um, Logan, because you guys. Yeah, Naz. Do you know that the guys in the US they have a movie pass? They can. It's like Netflix yeah. for movies. It's so good. As in, like, so it's actually go into the, the theater. Yeah. Yeah, actually, Logan, t tell us what Movie Pass is, and also, yeah, sure. yeah so go ahead, go on, go. Movie Pass is um, you pay about ten dollars a month, and you can see one free movie a day at um, uh, pretty much any theater. Some theaters choose not to participate, but it's the vast, vast majority of theaters in the U.S. Um, yeah, and you just kind of get one free movie a day. The you know the only caveat is that you have to be at the theater mm. um, in order to get your ticket. Okay. Um, um, which basically means that if you want to see a super popular movie out of theater where you pick the seats that you reserve, then you want to like, um, go there a little, like a few hours before the showing to just get that ticket, pick your seat, then come back when the actor show is. But honestly, like, that's really not much of a caveat. It's, it's, it's so great. And I've, I, it's just, you know, you see two movies a month and that's, it's already paid for itself because it's only 10 bucks a month. That's incredible. Um, you know, the price of a ticket. Here in Australia, is, is, movies yeah. are just, I don't know about you guys, but it's just outrageously it's expensive. It's so here. expensive. I mean, it's oh. probably like to, to go to the movies and get, a drink and a popcorn probably cost you like thirty dollars. Oh um, yeah, the concessions are, are always ridiculous. Oh, tell me yeah. about it, Nas. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know what? Um, just so because I I am so like super grateful for both of your time and respectful of your time. Let us crack on. Um, so and yeah. then we can dive I'm into. To figure out That's okay. How to record on my yeah. Windows Media Player here? If it's uh, too much no. of a hassle, we'll 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 play around just for the next minute or two. Uh, if we can't figure it out, which is basically for me, I've been recording. I'm seeing four thirty five. 436 it's i've been recording for four and now four minutes and 40 seconds on the quick time player okay. um so naz have you managed to just um oh yeah sorry i i we were i was in the middle of the tutorial as, as in explaining so if you go to yeah if you just um i the reason i say command space is because it's the easiest way to find things instead of going into menu so you on your mac you just go command space it'll bring up spotlight and you just type sound 
Yeah. Uh huh. And it should bring up the sound menu in the like system preferences. Um, yeah. Uh, spotlight. Pro oh wait a sec. System preferences. Sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so then it should have uh, you know your different options there. So the first one will probably be internal microphone, which is built in. And then for me, it's yeah. got uh, my mic, which is the Microsoft Life Chat LX six thousand or whatever. My uh, ch awesome. ch cheap little headphones that I'm wearing. Um, but you know, I'll I'll we'll all upgrade um, soon enough as well when uh, the Patreon starts taking off. I'll send Logan a nice shiny new Mac uh, yeah. mic. It'll be really great. <laughs> um, so um, just, and, um, just opening system preferences. Okay. Mac is being slow, so that's okay. I will send it positive Mac vibes. Um, I have this app open that's just called Voice Recorder. Okay. It does appear to be recording my voice. I, I hope it's a good yeah uh, quality. That's cool. Um, um, let me see if I can test it. Yeah, test it and see if, uh, like, maybe just start it, then stop it, and see if an MP3 is generated yeah. somewhere. And for both of you, if in the next minute or two we can figure out how to, like, actually generate the MP3 of each of our individual tracks, we'll go ahead with that. If not, um, in the next three minutes, we'll just, uh, I'm uh, like, from the very time I, from the moment I, uh, I joined the call, it's been, like, my baseline safety net recording, which is the Skype recording itself, is, um, that I'll yeah. always have that as a safety net. But, uh, uh, that's kind mm -hmm. of what we're trying to do. And Naz, I really appreciate, because you didn't know about this, and I really appreciate you, um, your patience. No, that's all good, as long as you can tell me what to do. I'm of course. Fine, so. <laughs> so, um, okay, so did you make your way to system uh, in sound uh, in system preferences? Uh, it's just, I had to just shut it down and reopen it. Oh, that's so I'll fine. I'll just manually go back and find it. Sound. Too easy. All right. Generic USB audio device. That's what I want to click. It, it needs to believe in itself more. I don't think it should. It should think of itself more highly. I mean, nothing is generic. Come on, like what is that? Why? Why is the device like treating itself that way? Come on, like not, right, um, every device is special. Nothing's generic. <laughs> uh, Logan, do you like my puns? Am I good on my pun game, or am I am I am I out of the? Uh, was there I, a pun there? Oh no! As in, I started anthropomorphizing a um, uh, yeah. an ex an external input device. I get nothing. I get no points for that one. That's that's terrible. No, but, but like, you, it wasn't really exactly a pun. It was just kind of more <laughs> of like a, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, uh, yeah, Logan is also really good at the very gentle takedowns. So he's like, that was pretty. Yeah. That was I very. Know. It was pretty horrible, man. You're, you're, I, I, I seem to be coming off as very critical. It's no. not my intention. <laughs> I just really appreciate it, man. Love you, man. Awesome. So, how are we doing? So, um, yeah. Did you end up being now able I've to? I've gone into. Yeah. Sorry, I've gone into input and output and selected the generic USB audio device, which yeah. is my wonderfully branded um, earphones. But I'm still, it's still um, outputting out of my computer. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, um, one thing you can do, 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 do is, oh yeah, actually, um, Naz, uh, if you go on the audio recording itself, there's, there should be next to the, um, cause I'm assuming it's popped up like a, like a floating, um, thing, mm. right? Yeah. So there's that little kind of down symbol right next to the stop. And, and actually it actually gives you, um, a couple of options it actually tells you what's recording. So, um, I think there should be something within, um, Logan, how do you think we're doing? Do you reckon we can get this sorted within the next three minutes, or shall we just rely on the? Yeah, uh... no, no, I, I, I think you should, you should go for it. I, I think um, this voice recording thing I found that comes with Windows should, it should do fine. I managed to, it does save it as a file, so just hopefully the file is, is good, it's good okay. quality. It's not okay. Too... All right, that's Logan sorted. What I can do is I actually have a laptop as well, a Windows laptop that might just automatically accept the earphones. So okay. if you can give me two seconds, I can run and grab that and then I'll Perfect. Um, join back in. Go back in a sec. Awesome, no troubles. Really? Awesome. Hey, Logan, have you checked out um, some of Nas's uh, work? On her Instagram? No, you know, I, I um, yeah, link me to it now because I did take yep. a look at it, um, I'll send it now. a while ago, you know, when you first said that she was going to be on. You're not going to believe this, dude. It's it's yeah, on another I level. I recall it being really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll send you the video that made me, like, instantly have to just, like, oh, my gosh, contact this person and get them um, on the show for sure. So it's this little mini video. And it just feels, like, straight up, like, there's a trico in her house kind of thing. It's it's that real. Um, so I'll just copy the link. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really awesome how many people uh, create their own tricos. Um, yeah. There's a lot of people that do. It's very cool. Ah, uh, but Nas is, like, like beyond. It's, it's really, like, on, on another level. So I've just sent that to you in the Skype. 
too easy. And you know what else, um, uh, Logan? I'm going to bring up that interview uh, so that we can dive into that yeah. later. Again, if yeah. you need to dash off, that's totally totally fine. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see how we go. Um, and what I'll also do is um, bring up uh, Sutner's book, and we're going to read the um, the the Valus chapter. So yes, which which I have done. So ah, oh, fantastic, incredible, too easy. How you doing, Naz? Oh, she's probably still away. Uh, how was your week, man? <laughs> it's been pretty good. Uh, pretty chill week for me. You know, I, I uh, worked on a short film, uh, which I guess uh, right now was... Um, man, time just kind of fly, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that was the, the, the weekend before last. Uh, I worked on a short film, which was nice. Pretty mm -hmm. easy shoot. Okay. Um, and we didn't record. Yeah, well, that was... Right. It was, you know, it was like you were going to record and then I wasn't there, but then I think you also ended up not recording an episode of it. That's right. Yeah. Um, it's been pretty hectic. Yeah. So I'm, I've actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Yeah, no. And then, um, came back and then it was kind of just waiting for the Oscars. Nice. Um, you know, I went to a big Oscar party, which is very nice. Kind of the first actual, uh, Oscar party that I've been to. Um, you know, I've been to a couple over people at, at uh, my college or the college I did go to kind of held them but this was this one was actually at the person's house which was nice nice um and bought some beers and we had some good dinner the dude made he made some meatballs for everybody dude you need and meatballs the Oscars. so good meatballs <laughs> yeah. and Oscars that sounds like a fantastic tradition <laughs> <laughs> and then um this whole week I've been playing Resident Evil Revelations 2 which has been fun oh cool nice um, yeah, so that's, that's really good. Um, so I figured I'd mention to this to you, uh, um, uh, Logan. Uh, so in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be actually wrapping up um, our sort of minute by minute on the Death Stranding podcast. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, we're hoping to have Robin Gaming on for the finale because uh, that would be great. He just reached a hundred thousand subs. Um, he's expressed interest oh. for sure in 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 jumping on. So he's um, covered a whole bunch of uh, games. And um, so what I was going to ask is uh, if you wanted to, because we you know you mentioned wanting to be on the David Lynch. Mm -hmm. um, we it's we sort of we're sort of torn on, on which um, director to, to, to sort of tackle for our first sort of off season episode of like, it's just the series is called influences in film and um, uh, with, with the death stranding. And I'm fig, I think what would be really cool is to, to just get the David Lynch stuff out of the way, because the thing that came out right before um, the thing that came out right before, um, uh, you know, uh, death stranding was the, the silent Hills, which is so, so lynchy and it's not even funny, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, certainly with the with the, the well, obviously the biggest uh the fetus would be the, the biggest uh Yeah, eraser a raise a head. Or, yeah, that I can think of. Absolutely, absolutely. I have yeah, that's yeah, gonna no, be a great deep just, dive to do. Yeah, just let me know when you're doing the episode and, and if I can make it then I then I will make it. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um now it's just let me know that she is booting up. Yeah. Yeah, so as I'm like, looking at those <laughs> There's a video on my recommended on YouTube right now that says Pacific Rim Uprising looks like trash, and they have a little uh, little Photoshop of John Boyega in it. I know. I really hated that. I saw that, and I was like, How do... "I've um, but I've I've since tried to kind of grow a bit of a thick skin uh, for um, uh, for for that sort of thing." But yeah, like there's such a um, it's 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 divisive um for now. But here's the thing. So I spoke with um, uh, Luke from Premiere Quest. He was on the first episode, obviously. And he recently was able to speak with uh, um, Stephen DeKnight, so the director right. uh, of, of Pacific Rim, which is really cool. Um, so a couple degrees from that, uh, that sort of sphere of um, where, where the sort of uh, activities at, and um, it apparently went really well. He asked actually a few. Um, uh, Luke asked a few questions on behalf of us, so we've officially been mentioned in that oh, wow. in that interview uh, with the director. So um, which is gives us a bit of exposure. Um, so some cool, some cool things happening all around and, uh, oh, actually now it's just message. It wants me to install the new version of Skype. Let me give this another go. I, what do you, Lugan? I, I think it's, uh, it's probably time to fall back on the, uh, uh, Maybe, yeah, oh, you, yeah. You, if you think that's what hey, I guys. Do. Okay. Actually here, here she is. Let's give it one more go. So go Naz. Um, yeah, unfortunately it wants me to, I think it wants me to upgrade <laughs> Skype. 
<laughs> no, that's okay. Yeah. So, Logan, it's okay. Um, stand down, soldier. You can, you can, uh, you can uh, turn off the, uh, um, the 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 quick. I'm uh, sorry, your your recorder. But that's good to know that um, you can record. Yep, yep. I'm gonna do it anyway, just in case. Um, oh no! You know why? It's because what you'll end up doing is creating this file that I basically can't use. This is nothing to guilt you, Naz. It's all good. Um, because it only, yeah, it only works if all three people. It's like it's like a seance. It only works if we're all holding hands. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, Sorry, I can't be of more help. That's okay. We can't bring back our dead relatives, thanks to you, Naz. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> the ritual is incomplete. Uh, so, yeah, it's okay. Um, uh, Logan, feel free to jump off. Um, we'll uh, we'll go with the main recording now. Okay. You're a legend. Because, come on, I don't want to take up your, your precious, uh, you know, hard drive real estate. Come on, honestly. <laughs> honestly. Fantastic. And um, you guys hear any of your voices um, back from my um, computer? Or oh, no. I, I'm, I can hear you. Yeah. It's all good. Yep, not getting any, um, what's the word, calls? Uh, um, yeah, like a feedback or something or echo. Yeah, yeah. Echo. Yeah. yeah. Too easy. Okay. Well, I will just bring up my show notes and we can get started. Awesome. And yeah, so uh, I figured I'd let you know while you're away now as I did a bit of um, talking sugar of your practice and what your annual sort of craft that you do. I was like, um, it's like there's a freaking trico in the house. It's not a sculpture. It's like, yeah, it's really, right there. It's really something. Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll obviously get into it on the, yeah. on the show. That's right. So let me quickly. Now I am the one delaying everyone. Okay. Interactive artistry. Move me to the weather. Okay. And three, and two, and one. Thank you.